three, two. Oh my God. Uh, what's up? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the program. The Airtime Podcast is presented by Van Shoes since 1966. There's nothing fake about it. Have something to believe in and be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Airtime, y'all's podcast. Yes, sir. Welcome back to the show. We have one of my favorite snowboarders, somebody that I really look up to on and off the board. Fucking incredible human, but yeah, he's he's one of the best snowboarders ever. Mickle Bang, welcome to the show. One of my faves. How you been, man? Wow, thank you. That's a great introduction. Appreciate that. Yeah, no worries, man. <laughs> Toss you up there with the greats. Now oh, you've been filming awesome. for a while. We'll 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 chalk you up there. Thanks, dude. That's that's very kind of you. So recently, super busy, busy year. Everybody in the world went to Japan. Um, but other than that, what have you been up to this season? This season, um, we actually, prior to this winter, we, me and Ben Ferguson, we were like, we need to go back to Japan because we hadn't gone back to Japan since the pandemic. I guess Ben did, but, um, I hadn't been there in a really long time. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those things, you know, it's like, let's get a trip to Japan and stay there for a while and kind of, you know, how everybody calls it Japanuary, Japan, how do you say it? Japanuary? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, so we were going to do that. And um, Burton is doing a new project right now uh, with Red Bull. And uh, Ben and I are a part of that. And um, yeah, so the one of the segments is going to be in Japan. Mark McMorris was there for the beginning of it. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was all time. So the last time you went to Japan would have been with Travis or? Yeah, actually, that's right. Yeah. Cause filming for the fourth phase, um, we went two years in a row and then we were going to go a third year, but, um, I kind of saved the, the, I'm going into something right away. I like it. Let's go. (laughs) I went down to Japan a little bit earlier than everybody. And, you know, like uh, uh, Brain Farm is like a big production with a lot of people. You know, there was like 10 media, you know, and it's a big crew and a lot of equipment and all that stuff. And uh, that year I was really motivated and I um, ended up going down to Japan a couple days before everybody was supposed to arrive. And the conditions were just terrible. And so I just called Travis and I was just like, Hey guys, like this is looking bad. <laughs> I know shit. I know Shin was also like on it, but, uh, I was down there and I could confirm it that like, this is gonna, you know? So I think I saved the uh, brain farm a few bucks that year, Ooh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's the last time I was there. Nice. And was this trip, you mentioned Red Bull project. Um, I don't see a Red Bull sticker on the board. Yeah. How did you uh, sneak through the cracks? <laughs> well, well, uh, I think the fact that I don't have a drink sponsor um, works in your favor. It works. It works in my favor because then, you know, I can kind of be a part of their projects because I'm not a, you know, I don't ride for any other competitive energy drinks. So how is that not like a thing right now? If I was like in a, a big fucking building right now. I'd be like, we gotta give that Mickel Bang guy a, a sticker because like <laughs> you're you're still on podiums. You know what I mean? You're still going out there and you're riding in contests, ending videos, opening videos, full parts, still completely integrated in every single area. It's like I don't know how you don't have the sticker of somebody. Yeah. I would give you a sticker. I will Thank give you. you a sticker. <laughs> Can I get a sticker? <laughs> yeah, we'll give you yeah, we'll give you an airtime sticker. Oh, that's you sick. had one on your board last year. I did, year. That I did. Was crazy. I, I need to get a, a re I need to stock up on some uh, new stickers. I got you. Yeah. No, the whole energy energy drink. You know, I used to I used to ride for I was on Rockstar for a little bit and then I was on Monster for a few few years and we parted ways and um and ever since that I haven't you know, haven't been on one. So and uh, I got to be honest, that was kind of like, that was my bad when I got, you know, when we went our separate ways, because... Love the honesty. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I like to be honest about this stuff, you know, because maybe some people can learn from it, you know, because I, um, I definitely didn't wear the, you know, the hat. And I mean, I wore, I wore the, I wore the 
uh, the Monster logo when I was snowboarding and I had the sticker on my board, but, you know, when I was hanging out in town and, you know, I, I think they noticed that I wasn't as into wearing the monster on my forehead as the other people, you know, and uh, that kind of bit me in the ass. So if I could go back in time, I would wear that monster hat on my <laughs> right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, so if you're on monster or anything, just just take that thing on there because, um, yeah, it's nice to have have along the way for sure. I think that they should just re-sign you. I think that would be an easy... Dude, like, I agree, man. Like, come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> like, who else is going to... Who else is on Monster that's going to natural selection? Like, what uh, athletes do they have? Zoe? Yeah, Zoe. I think Torgir is he? Yeah, Torgir, Torgir is. Um, is Sage on it? Yes. So, okay, they got a couple people. So they but they, couple people. But they, they want to round out that podium, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They need, they need some more people on yeah. there. <laughs> and they don't have anybody Canadian that's going. So, I mean, you're, and not that you're Canadian, but you live here a lot of the yeah, time. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like pretty much Canadian. Yeah, I would, are you more Canadian or are you more American? <laughs> oh man, that's a, that's a really good question. I think in the beginning of my career, I was more American. And then now, you know, halfway through my career, I've been more Canadian. We know you don't want to move <laughs> away from Norway. It's one of the happiest places on earth. It's beautiful. Everybody there is beautiful. But let's say you can't move back to Norway. You got to move to the States or Canada. Who are you picking? I'm sorry, America. I'm picking Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no, know. I don't know. I, I, I think if I was going to move to America, I would move to the Northwest. And then, you know, if I was moving to Canada, I would be in like BC. Yeah. You know, because it's just uh, the whole Northwest is just, uh, I love it. It's, uh, it's crazy. Like even just now, um, after being in Japan for, uh, six weeks actually we kind of slipped that's away from one. that one but that's a big one uh when i finally got i i got through the border i was first in bellingham um because my wife's uh, parents live there and then like just getting into um getting into the northwest and then driving cr across the border and then getting up to like squamish and then i just like i don't know it's just like feeling that it's like it's like going home it's it's crazy you know it's like I get that same feeling at the end of the season when I'm going home to Norway and I get that same feeling when I like come back to BC, like after, you know, not being here for a while. So I have, um, yeah, I love, love Canada. <laughs> do you love Canada or do you love just staying at Mikey Rentz's house? <laughs> like, cause that's probably the feeling of home when you pull uh, into Mikey's yeah, house for and sure. you're like, I'm yeah. home. What yeah. up street king? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like living with the family now, you know, Chili and street king. Uh, no, dude, Mikey has been so nice um, to let me stay at his place, and it, it is the best deal, you know? Like, I get to stay there, I have my own room, and, you know, he has a sauna, it's right in Squamish, it's close to the city, it's close to Whistler, you know, it's kind of like the the perfect place to be. Food is good, the river, I don't know, it's just an amazing place. I mean, Mikey's got great jokes. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. He's great. Yeah. He really likes jokes. Talk about stuff, you know. Oh, man. Yeah. No, Mikey Mikey is seriously the best. It's also pretty cool because um, in the beginning when I came here, you know, it was his house was like full of, you know, it was always full, you know, with Ika or Benji or Nimala, you know. And um, I was kind of always like doing like renting places or being in hotels and blah, blah blah and when those guys like started or when they didn't come to Canada as much or to Mikey's house as much <laughs> um that kind of started opening a pocket and then when Mikey was like hey man do you want to you can rent a room at my place if you know if you want and I was just like fuck yeah I was like are you I'm kidding in. me oh yeah I'm <laughs> in dude yeah yeah yeah, Mikey. Um, Mikey has been a big part of my like Canadian snowboard career, you know, which is a big part of your career. Yeah. Many career, like oh, I yeah. Ika, you brought up there, Benji, Aeronimala, like yeah. Without Mikey's, um, the squam, squam de nav or whatever is it? What does he call it? Yeah, yeah. So uh, if for the listeners that don't know, in uh, Whistler they have a spa called uh, the Scandinav. 
It's really nice, by the way. Uh, but Mikey has got his sauna in the backyard and a, and a bathtub where we do cold plunges, and he calls it the Squam Dinov. I mean, it, the Squam Dinov is, is a great place. It, it's the best. It's the best. We've got the sauna hats now. Have you seen those? No. Sauna Did you guys hats? make hats? No, no. Uh, go on eBay or wherever and check it out. Right type uh, sauna hats. There's these like really nice hats that like are supposed to like your head is not supposed to get as warm when you use them. Nice. It's funny scenario. So we sit in there and drink beer and with our funny little sauna hats, and yeah, it's a good, it's a good, good setup. Well, I can't tell you to go to the Scandinav and drink beers, but the Scandinav is a sponsor of ours. What? And I know that you're well, here. Well, that was perfect. It was good timing, <laughs> and the fact that you're like, I love that place. I was like, oh, I don't even need yeah. to tell people. Everybody loves that place. It's incredible. It's really hard not to like that place. I know that you're here with your now wife. Mm-hmm. Um, so wow. I'm gonna chalk you up for two two Dude. bath passes. Nice for uh, you and your lady. Um, Damn, that is amazing. Hot, cold plunge and uh, get get your mind right for. I mean, you got a lot of things coming up. You got natural yeah. selection coming up. Thank you. Which Thank you. We can touch on later, but uh, yeah, enjoy the bath passes. That's nice. That's nice. You know, like yeah, being sore or having a few days in a row on the hill definitely want to. You know chill a yeah. little bit and that's a good place to do it or you gotta just calm the mind you know what I mean a couple yeah, stressful for days sure. you know for it's sure a nice place it really is we'll switch uh, switch gears here a little bit back we'll we'll grind these gears back to the Japan conversation mm-hmm. I uh, quickly wrote down a couple bullet points that I would like you to maybe le- maybe touch on um, favorite 7-Eleven snack ooh oh man it's gonna sound a little crazy um have you seen okay, so in Japan they have these like you know how they um they have like uh medium boiled eggs in like soy sauce bags? I at the end of the trip I was like every day I would bring those things out there. <laughs> oh my god, you should check it out. I got uh, I got a food blog, it's uh food blog and Mike. I got it on there. I follow you. You do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that Instagram account is like kind of dedicated to Mikey because my Mikey Mikey thinks this is hilarious. Um the but yeah, boy. But yeah, I think I think the um, uh medium boiled eggs in soy sauce. It's a little gnarly, but if if you don't it looks gnarly, but it's it's awesome. But it hits the palate. It is the palate. It hits the palate. <laughs> yeah. How much uh, uh, 7-Eleven and uh, uh, convenience store foods are, is too much there? I feel like people live off of going to 7-Eleven there or London or whatever. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Um, I feel like you got to balance it out. It re- yeah, totally. We On the, on the beginning of our trip, um, we were staying at this. It was really nice hotel, actually. And not not too expensive, but it was more the more expensive hotel that we had that trip. And at breakfast, it, it was the most insane breakfast buffet they had. And oh, they at had, Asahi Daki? Yes. Yeah. Have you yeah. been to that place? We I don't went. Rem- we followed oh, you yeah, guys. Yeah. We went there after oh, yeah. you guys. Okay, okay. <laughs> we, we were like, oh, Burton was here. We're going. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, well, anyway, I don't remember the name of the place, but, um, dude, you go to breakfast and there was steak. And like sushi and like it was like dinner for breakfast, you know, which I I'm a, I love that. I can I can do dinner for breakfast any day. Uh, but we what we did uh, those first five days in that hotel is that we we took the the coffee cups like the to go cups, and we would fill them with beef, <laughs> and then we would just fill them with beef, put the cap on there, and like put it in a Ziploc bag, and then we call it meat cup. And then we were just like out in the backcountry and just like, like getting like best steak out there. Yeah, so that that was the beginning of the trip. And and um, when we moved hotels, then we kind of started getting back over to because they not not every place had a good breakfast like that. So then we had to start. Then we were back on the Seven Eleven breakfast <laughs> and 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 lunch scenario that year. There's yeah. something that you do when you get. When you eat shitty food for a while, it's like you you go inside the Seven Eleven bathroom on day five, <laughs> and you look at yourself in the mirror yeah. with all your Seven Eleven groceries, and you're just like, "I'm a piece of shit." <laughs> like, it, and your bag is full with just like nothing in there is yeah. good for you. You're like, and you read the ingredients; it's like a thousand different things on the back, and you're like, "This is not Whole Foods, <laughs> dude." I um. Throughout the trip, I mean, I stayed there for like uh, six weeks, I think. We extended our trip four times. 
whoa, that's a lot of annoying phone calls to the airlines. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and yeah, it was, yeah, and it also cost a little bit of money. But um, the reason why we ended up ex- extending was because like the first part of the trip was filming. And then we, um, if uh, you, you know, the mystery series that Burton has, uh, we attended one of those. Uh, it was like a bank slalom. It was really cool. A bunch of people came to like see us and stuff, which was rad. Um, and then after that, we were kind of like, shit, we don't really have enough footage, you know, for like a Japan segment. So that was the first reason why we extended. And then that was kind of a short window. And then we were kind of like, oh, man, you know, let's just stay a little longer. North America doesn't look like they have any snow. So then we extended again. And then uh, we we went um, up by like Sapporo area. Went through some places and found some really cool stuff. And then time just kind of flew by and we're like, shit, if we just get one more, you know, sunny day. And then we saw in the forecast that there was snow coming and sun and we're just like, we got it. We got to stay longer. So, yeah, people were kind of they were kind of like, dude, I I had to tell my wife, too. I was just like, this has never happened before. Like, she's like, I was like, I promise you I'm not going to extend any longer and she is like yeah well i heard that before i yeah four times i'm just like well no i promise you this time it won't happen (laughs) but it actually didn't happen that we didn't extend it anymore so we were ready to go home by then yeah i mean after the fourth call you're like the air canada lady's like what are you guys extending again (laughs) you're like oh okay shredding after you go riding there what's your go-to beverage Ooh, well uh beer for sure. What kind? What, what uh, you... Well, we the Sapporo Classic. Okay. They only sell it in Sapporo, which or Hokkaido, I think. In Hokkaido, or is it Sapporo? Uh, either way, either one of those two. But it's delicious. Is it the one that says um, classic and it's got yellow on it? Yeah, yeah it's, that one's it looks, good. Yeah, the t- it's such a. It's a great tan. Yeah, it's so good. Definitely, we were actually this trip. We were trying to like. Not drink too much beer, so we were on the one day beer program. One day meaning like one day you were allowed. Oh no, like a cheat day? Uh, no, no. I mean uh, a beer a day program. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so like try and stay on that for a while, you know, and then like when we got some stuff done, then we could have a few more, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it actually it actually works, and you got a little bit more energy, you know. Favorite place to snowboard in Japan? Ooh. See, this is a tough one because. Um, South Island, like the, like the mountains are like in Hakuba are just like insane, you know, like the runs you get there are just like, it's massive mountains. But if you go to the North Island, the mountains are smaller, but the, like the consistency of like the snow and like the temperature, it's that. So I, uh, by saying that, I think North Island for sure. I think that's my favorite. If if I was going to give advice to anyone to go there, like, and you only had a short amount of time, uh, definitely North Island, because you're more likely to, like, get some really good powder. I mean, consistency is a factor when you, a couple weekend warriors are going to yeah. chalk up, like, they're planning the trip now for next year. They want to know that they're going to get the goods, and the, the best odds would be to go to the North Island. For but sure. if you go south and you that's gamble, the, that's the thing. That's the be thing. crazy. Yeah, like that that year when um, we went for the fourth phase, um, or th- the two years we went in a row, we stayed there for a month, um, uh, both times. And the trick is to kind of go there early. Like if you're going to go South Island, like you look at the forecast, see if see if um, see if it's a lot of snow. If they have a good base, and then if they have a lot of snow, then like going early is definitely the ticket. Cause when we did that, it like, we got it really good, but we like committed to Hakuba, you know? And that was like, you know, Travis is just, he's so on it. And like, he, he knew, you know, and he had that whole place mapped out and like, you know, just next level. That guy's, I have a lot of respect for Travis. He's like, yeah, it's really cool guy to work with and yeah, good guy. Yeah, he, got, he gives back a lot more than I think. There's a lot of people that recognize that, but it is wild, like just how much he does give back. Yeah, with his it, movies, his events, totally. I mean, he's, he's all about bringing snowboarding and and doing a good job of like not making it look like 
whack. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, those movies were kind of cheesy in some ways, but it was all about like showcasing the best snowboarding and giving the opportunity to the people who deserved it most, which I really respect. And I think that in the in the new day and age that we live in where we're, we're we celebrate mediocrity too much i feel like mm-hmm. it's nice to have a platform where it's like travis's stuff is just with the best which i mean as a consumer of content i want to watch people that are the best so if you're going to be in fourth phase i'm like if there was a fifth phase let's say <laughs> yeah. like i want to see the best snowboarders in the world i don't want to see like you know yeah, me, yeah, it's cool. here comes jody down the mountain no. <laughs> <laughs> Like, That's oh, not true, man. <laughs> this movie can't be that oh, good. Oh, man, dude, you're hilarious. <laughs> uh, That's really funny. No, but seriously, um, Travis, not, you know, he, dude, what a, he's such a good snowboarder, man. <laughs> like, he's definitely, definitely one of my favorites. And and apart from that, like, how nice he is and what he does for, you know, snowboarding. And, yeah, he's a stellar guy, you know? Totally. Yeah. But was it fun to work with him? Was the yeah, first time you really sure. worked I, with him on the Japan trip? Yeah, it was. That was like the first time where I, dude, I, I will never forget when I got the call from him, you know, um, I was in New Zealand, uh, on a Burton, uh, shoot something and, and I didn't really know what I was going to do the next year. Kind of a little bit at the point where I was like, not worried, but I was kind of like, oh man, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. There wasn't really any projects going on. And then he calls me and I was just like, hello. And he's like, Travis. And I was just like, Travis, you know, like, cause I didn't really know Travis that well at that, at that time. And he just, just, yeah, he was just like, do you want to come film with us and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, of oh, course I want to do that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, that was it. And then I met him, met him. It was me and him. We met up in Tokyo and we took the train together, uh, up to Nagano and met up with Shin and, uh, yeah. And then we rode together a couple of days before the crew came in and it was really cool to get to know him. And then, um, and also kind of like, you know, like it's Travis, you know, and like definitely a little bit like in the beginning, a little bit like nervous, you know, around him, you know, but then, you know, that, that, that passes and, uh, yeah, he's just a really nice guy. But, um, apart from that, like filming with him is, it's been such a big, like learning experience for me. Like, just how he's so on it and he always makes plans ahead and like he has a vision he always has a vision you know and like things he wants to do so it's very um inspiring you know the stuff he does like dude he'll be he'll be on like google earth and and like we get to hakuba and he like knows the entire mountain you know (laughs) like that kind of stuff and when i first met him i was like that blew my mind like we had a house that had like a, um, uh, a home theater and he just like blew up the Google earth. And he was like, I think if we go and ride here, like this, it looks like a pretty sick zone. And like, you know, and, and I had never even thought of doing that <laughs> before. And when I saw that, I was like, holy shit, he's on like another level. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool. And then also he just like, yeah, he's determined and yeah. And f- Dude, what a snowboard is so good. <laughs> yeah, <Zen>. totally. <laughs> Every Zen. year he films a couple things that you're like, I don't know if anybody else could film that thing. Yeah, like dude. It's, it's a Travis thing. Dude, <laughs> like Dark Matter, for example, when like the lines that he rode there and just like how, yeah, he's just, he's a beast, man. He, it's really, really inspiring and cool. It's all the respect to that guy for sure. I like when I'm riding down a face and I see one cliff band, <laughs> yeah. two trees, one's bigger than the other, and then one big boob at the bottom. I'm like, just all you got to do is go over the cliff band and then toe side around the big tree, not the small tree, yeah. and then do a heel side turn on the boob and you're done. Yeah. Not too complicated. I can wrap my head around that. The things that Travis wraps his head around, it's like there's like 30 crucial points where you cannot make errors like i don't know how he can digest that information and that's that's what i'm saying and that's kind of like the same thing that i mentioned with the google earth thing you know he like he studies you know like he actually like studies the you know and like he i bet you know i i do that sometimes too like visualize i think that's a really important thing to do if you're like writing lines and stuff to because sometimes you're just looking at the mountain like you're looking at it you know and then when you get, obviously when you get on top, it looks different. 
So sometimes I like actually like close my eyes and I actually like visualize like um, some of it before I go, just so you're kind of more you're more prepared when you go, because that's that's where you remember where you get your or where you get to your anchor points, you know, to continue your line. It's it's um, I recommend it. I've I've been doing it and it's definitely been helping me sometimes. Like just kind of just like close quickly close your eyes and just be like okay around that thing down there and then yeah and then punt it like a mental <laughs> you take like a mental picture yeah and just, then just kind of because because you can see it in front of you and then you're like okay if i'm up there i gotta go i gotta go down to that rock and then i gotta make my way down to that tree you know and then even right there too you can kind of picture like okay kind of put yourself in the situation of being on the top and just like kind of picturing how to like, okay, I'll got to stay on, stay on my toes around this thing and then I'll get there. And then when you get to the top, it's a little bit easier to remember where you're going to go. Totally. Especially if you're a visual learner, the fact that yeah. you would close your eyes and visualize it. And then at one point you have to visualize like, it, but you need to listen to your gut. Yeah, exactly. Which is a hard thing to do. For sure. And then I don't, I don't know how Travis does it, but I'm sure he visualizes because I mean, or <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he does something like that, or he just studies the crap out of his line, you know. He just, and also, dude, his like, I don't think anyone else has more experience than him in Alaska right now, dude. And he's like, how much has he ridden Alaska? Since, Hours, like, and he's not only um the rider. He's involved on the heli side, the Avi side. Oh yeah, yeah. Like totally. you were saying about he. If he's there's like a the, new he's app, the, he's, he's the guy studying. that that rescues everyone. He, he he's the he's the greatest mountain man of all time. I Dude. mean, Jeremy Jones, you could put him in that category too for like, but that's he he brings a lot of tools, and I like that mm -hmm. Travis uh, maintains that freestyle focus, absolutely, rather than just like mountaineering you know what i mean if i yeah. saw travis with ice picks and a bunch of harnesses i'd be like that's still <laughs> dope but i want to see travis do yeah, a back five sure. and land switch Dude, haul sure. out and then do a cab three totally <laughs> yeah man which he does it's my favorite thing about him is like the way he snowboards is the way you would play a snowboard video game. Uh, yeah totally <laughs> seriously yeah yeah no that's so true Everybody else is like, hey, we got three angles. We can splice them all together, and it's going to make it look like I ripped this AK line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think, like, the um, like the lines that he does in, like, Alaska, you know, that's – but the stuff he does, like, pillow lines, he's so good at writing pillow lines. The best. I mean, dude, even, like, look at uh, last year in Revelstoke at Natural Selection when he, like – pillow runs that he did there was unreal i i mean i rolled that i did not go well for me that that uh for me that uh, that contest but you went into mariana's trench head first oh i i got <laughs> shook man i i was just like i remember i like landed on the pillow and got shot out and then like the slough took me and it like drove me through this like tunnel and all i could see was like rocks and sticks and i was like oh no it was scary. And I then scary. I, I came through and it was just a big tunnel. And then I like got on my feet and like rode out and I was like, okay, it probably counts. Probably counts. <laughs> no, but that shook me, dude. I, I I had I had some other plans, but that was just like that kind of ruined it for me. And then I didn't really have any so then I kind of had to freestyle on that. But whatever. We shouldn't we don't have to talk about that. No, but, let's um, I like that where you you unintentionally took that because you know, you go to Revelstoke and you go into fucking Mariana's Trench head first, yeah. scary, get out of it, escape like something that could have been gnarly, and well, then rebound and then go to Alaska and get second and ride probably, arguably the best out of anybody in like that Torstein when Torstein had his great year where he was just on like that day, like your front five to half cab up the wall to the butter, like you had, you would just released like some sort of mickel god mode <laughs> it was insane <laughs> oh man that's thank you um yeah i don't know that's you know some sometimes it just like sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and i think in the backcountry like ha obviously having a plan is like not a bad idea i mean um <laughs> kind of a great idea. kind of a good idea yeah <laughs> oh man uh, what I'm trying, <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is that uh, when I when I messed up in Revelstoke, it was like 
I it was kind of overwhelming. And then I was going against Dustin Craven. So the the Kootenai, you know, the Kootenai cowboy. Yeah. So I had to out Kootenai the Kootenai. You know, uh, am I saying it correctly? Oh yeah, yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah. So so by that, you know, I was just like, oh man, he's probably gonna go down the biggest pillow line. So I was like, I gotta go do the same thing, you know. And the, that kind of screwed me. That was kind of the same as Ben Ferguson when he was going against Travis, and he was like, I gotta out Rick Rick the Rick, you know. And then he went on top of the biggest cliff and was, you know, cliffhanger. Yeah. But um, I had a plan of doing something that was like kind of gnarly. And then I didn't really make that. I didn't make many other. I didn't have many options after that. And then I kind of got a little shook. And then I just like kind of freestyle and it didn't work out. Like freestyling and just winging it down something like that is you can't really do it. <laughs> you got to know where you're going, you know. Because there's like trees and I know it's it's pretty dangerous. So, what mistake did you feel like you may have made last year that you're not gonna make going into this year? Like all these events, like the times when I've been doing good at natural selection is when I absolutely don't give a shit about what anyone else does. And I think that's I think that well that's what works for me. I don't know what works for anybody else, but like that's a like if I don't care, like okay, say I go against who, it doesn't matter any of them. This year, what I did wrong, or last year, what I did wrong was that I was too worried about what my opponent was doing. And usually, when I've been doing well, I just been focusing on myself. And then in the end, too, I feel like that's kind of what we're trying to do here. You know, we're trying to show snowboarding, and if you're doing what like you like to do then it'll most likely look a lot better than if you're like trying to like be better than someone or something you know you just gotta like go out there and be yourself and and do what works for you you know and try and make it look good and have fun man that's 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 my approach and you know if i don't advance then at least i have that going you know i think every rider that's invited to natural selection is invited due to a certain strength or set of skills that they have. And that's the reason why Travis and Pat Bridges and whoever else picks these riders to come. Mm. And it would be foolish to not lean into those strengths because that's the reason why you're invited. Like if you're a rowdy powder house, pillow riding animal like Dustin, Mm. that's what people want. You know what I mean? Like unleash the beast. Like (laughs) we want to see you do a crooked cop into a pillow field and thread the needle through some trees or switch back five into a rowdy pillow field. Yeah. But like someone like Blake Paul, like we want to see you go really smooth on your heel and do a dope crippler and like, you know, do a back seven melon. Like you're a little light bird. You know what I mean? Like that's what people, that's what we want. That's what everybody wants. That's why you're, you're kind of invited. And I think it's crazy that people would try to, match their riding with someone else's or whatever i think like just hone in on like your strengths and lean into them yeah because i exactly because i think that's that's when it goes wrong if you're like trying to do something that it's oh, not, Travis, not you Travis. you know yeah or out kootenai the kootenai or out kootenai the kootenai yeah out kootenai the kootenai yeah um so yeah i think that's my strategy and then also another thing that's a good strategy is always to have a bunch of options so, because right now, for example, I just got an email the other day where they sent us like a photo of the venue and it's like, I mean, you can zoom in and whatever, but it's, you don't really know until you get there and you're staring at it underneath it, you know? So you can definitely get an idea of what, what it is, but once you get there, that's when you can f- really start making a plan. And then, um... And then having a bunch of different options is a good idea. Because, like, if if on contest day, like, somebody takes your line, you know? Somebody goes before you and they take your run and you're like, shit. Now I got to go down the track that some, you know? So then if you have a bunch of options or, or say, like, okay, I have a few, I have two options that are a little bit more gnarly and two options that are kind of medium. And then if your opponent does does something you know then maybe you don't have to go as gnarly or if you're you're losing and you need to step it up then maybe you can move over to like a little bit gnarlier you know uh i think that's a good strategy yeah there's it's wild to see travis bring this 
event together with an amazing group of people, but um, it's such a different event than any other event in snowboarding because there's literally homework for the riders. And if you just want to like (laughs) leading up to the event, you're like, I'm not going to study the, you know, the drone Uh, angles and I'm not going to study these maps and I'm not going to look at the weather forecast and stuff like that. Like you are going to screw yourself. You need to know those lines and know those trees and be like, Hey, the old growth that turns into a pitchfork. Like that's my drop in point. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Last year, like multiple people were like, Dude, it felt like I was back in school. <laughs> it like, was totally- seriously, everybody got like a you know a friggin' just sheet of of stuff that we needed to study before we go out. You know, yeah, like was, I was never good wild. at school. That's why I started yeah, I snowboarding. <laughs> I know. I, I, I was, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go uh, full circle here. We're gonna grind these gears right back to a halt because we uh, we're still on the a couple touch points I want to do with uh because just because I wrote these down, we're gonna do them. Okay. Um, <laughs> back to Japan. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Okay, do you ride a wide board or a long board in Japan? Uh, so I ride the same board all year. Mm, okay. I ride the same board all year. Um, mainly because it's the biggest board in the Burton line. And I prefer a bigger board, you know, uh, it's a 170 wide Burton custom. It's my absolute favorite. I've been riding it for, yeah, since forever. Just that board is just good for everything. And, um, I have another strategy about riding the same board too, is that like, if you're very familiar with your one board, you know, then you're going to ride it really well instead of like changing up your boards all the time and, you know, it might, I don't know. It, it, that's fun too. But for me, I, I have so much fun on this thing that like, I don't really need to have another board. So yeah, that's my go-to. That's the one I got had in Japan. <laughs> I would be disappointed if Burton wasn't making a Mickle style board. Like you should have your name on a board. It's actually crazy that, that you know, <laughs> but like if they don't have a board that matches your exact riding style to every spec, it's like, you're one of the best snowboarders in the world. People want to ride that board. So it's like, Dude. please design the Mickle board because yeah. everybody wants to snowboard like you. Yo, so like, let's get that tech. Actually, it's pretty, it's pretty funny. So if that were to happen, I would probably design a board similar to this. Okay, so you have the board. I you just need the name so. on the board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Nigro. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Dodge. Yeah. <laughs> Chalk them up. No, seriously. No, it, it is it is so nice. Like I like having a little bit of tail so I can go switch, and I like the. Um, you know, cam- camber, camber boards and yeah. the reverse camber era. What a flop. Yeah, it was, it was I guess it was fun for a little bit. It's fun to p- see people at Super Park hit a, <laughs> hit a, hit a hip on a, on a reverse camber out. board. <laughs> <laughs> like really people uh, are riding like the skate banana, like yeah, riding yeah, hips. Yeah, yeah. They're just like. The only problem I have with those boards is that when I went on like flats, the board just went like. Oh, like I, back I and forth. It. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. I don't know. I think I rode one for like. It's nice to have like a hold of edge. I don't even know, like a couple days. Mm-hmm. And immediately, like, I was like, I have to get off this thing. I went flat camber, I think, for two years. And I've been on, and then immediately I was just like, there's just more pop. Like, the, it makes sense to have a camber profiled snowboard. Yeah. Like, it can yeah, go it reverse does. in certain areas. Like, the no, the tip and tail can yeah, kind of sure. push up like more. It, but. Yeah, for sure. Um, I agree with you. Um, are uh, avalanche fence clips in Japan played or, or not? I mean, it's kind of classic, right? I mean, it, it, it's it's not. It's good. It's nice. good. I like it. It's like coming to Whistler and riding a pillow line. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. like they're there. We're doing it. They're there. We're doing it. <laughs> yeah. I actually guilty. I did hit one. I had hit it, hit it before too, but I hit it differently this time though. So you happy with the shot on it? Yeah. What'd you do it's on? It's pretty it? chill. Just uh, backside air, indie. Nice. Yeah. I'm sure. A little. About- it was like a little tranny finder over a tree. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you got the pocket. Yes. Nice. Good snipe. <laughs> Sushi or Japanese barbecue? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> Your face even looks sad. <laughs> oh, man. I like them both so much. Uh, friggin' A, man. Dude, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go barbecue. <laughs> barbecue and bear. Why not? Nice. Favorite Japanese rider? Ooh, Kazu. Kazu and I kind of go way back. Like, um, standard days, standard days. And like, he used to come like when Burton used to do like, uh, photo shoots in Hempstead in Norway. Um, 
Kazu would come there, and I think he, I think he's two years older than me. I think he was 16, I was 14, and I barely knew any English. I knew a little bit more than Kazu, but but he didn't know much English, and but because of snowboarding, you know, we we you know it was our that was our language, you know, and and um, we would talk to each other kind of like in like like s- sign language kind of a little bit like hungry or you know or like you know shit like or sleepy you know or like stuff like that so that i'll never forget that man um i've known him forever and i'm i'm bummed i didn't see him when i was in japan this time but i'll have to go visit another time hit him up see if he's available i mean he's one of the greats man like dude kazu it's insane like Dude, from his pipe riding and then into like oh, and even just jump riding, hips, backcountry riding, all of it, <laughs> <laughs> totally, all of it. He is a savage. Dude. Oh yeah, like and uh, such a cool dude too. Like yeah. chiller, certified cool. Not yeah. trying to be cool. Not just yeah. is cool. Certified. Yeah, you know what I mean. The definition of somebody who's cool is Kazu. Yeah, I mean, dude, he used to like. It was crazy. He used to like sleep. Like at those shoots, like everyone was just like, where's Kazu? Oh, he's sleeping. And he would just like sleep, sleep all day. And then when it was time to hit the jump or whatever, he would just show up and just do some crazy trick and then go back and sleep. (laughs) We hit a hip with him a long time ago, probably like 10 years ago, a Whistler hip shoot. And Kazu and Arthur Longo were there. Oh, sweet. And Kazu just sat the whole time we were warming up. And then basically was like communicated that with Scott Surface, who was shooting photos at the time, like, is the light good? And then he just does a straight air, bigger than anybody. And then he did one air to fakie, backside 180 Japan, yeah, bigger than anybody, hit it twice and just stopped and then sat there and just smoked spliffs and got like the best photo <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ever. <laughs> it was like, Seriously. I was like, you are fucking oh, so man. sick. Like, it was dude. massive. His jacket was just flapping. Oh, all man. yellow Adidas kit. Dude, he was <laughs> with so... dreads. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude, for sure. So styly, man. Um, one of my favorite Kazu clips on on a hip is the Alleyoop front seven that he did, and that was in Hemsedal too. I was I was with him on that session. Um, uh, that's a sick clip. What'd you do on it? I think I did. Um, I think I did a switchback one. Oh, if crazy. I'm not, if I'm not on a hip? Yeah, kind of like onto the like 270 or just 90. It was it was it was like a spine, okay. so you could go both ways. And for me, a regular would be the front side hip, so I went like switch. Okay, yeah. Back one into the I'm pretty sure that's what I did. Nice. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of great hip riders and you've gotten to ride with a lot of the best. Who stands out to you as some of the greatest hip riders of all time? Oh man, well Kazu is in there for sure. Yeah. And then um Mods Johnson also was like doing some crazy big airs. <laughs> yeah, do you remember was... do you remember Roman's uh, for Vivid when he oh, did the that? Off the toes, yeah. Melon? Yeah. yeah. That was sick. Yeah. That was really cool. Another person too, Charles Reed. Oh yeah. Dude, Great that name. guy used to dude. <laughs> Charles Reed. He is... he is I feel like he is one of the most like underrated snowboarders, like he is such a good snowboarder. I, I used to ride with him all the time, and, like, man, I, I don't feel like he got the, all the respect that he deserved, dude. I and mean, he f- would just send it on the hips, dude. Like, yeah. What more do you want in life than, I mean, maybe he didn't get the respect um, from a large audience of people that are somewhat oblivious and clueless, but if he has respect from you, one of the greatest snowboarders of all time, like, that's... That's saying it all. That's like Wayne Gretzky being like one of the best hockey players is X. Like that means that holds weight. So if he hears that, you know, that's going to mean something rather than a couple people at 7-Eleven that have been snowboarding 10 times. Like Charles yeah. Reed's the best. If Nickel <laughs> Bang is like one of the best hip riders ever is Charles Reed. He's going to be like, fuck yeah. <laughs> I hope he tunes in. <laughs> oh, me too. I need to get him on the pod, man. That guy's dude. A yeah. He'd be, he'd be a good one for, for this for sure. I mean, he just does dope shit too. Yeah. Like, Planes, I remember everything about like it. the um, I think the last project he did when he went to he went to Valdez yeah killed and, it and he hadn't really been riding Alaska I I don't I think I think that was like, his first time and he got a cover right that front three down that spiny oh yeah yeah the front three was um, insane 
yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, yeah he he does it all. He hips really are does. hips are gnarly though. Like if you look at someone like Charles, one of the best hip riders, mm-hmm. like he's he's got some serious injuries now because yeah. when you hips are one of those things where it's like it if you land in the pocket they, they're butter but a little bit left a little bit right it's like you're yeah there and you start going that big like a mads johnson method big yeah 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 like, you go like world yeah, record totally. style like on the like hip. jeff yeah. curtis photo like <laughs> yeah. from the you're like what are you doing i remember that yeah, photo that being was, in trans world yeah like, that's oh. insane yeah i'll put that one in, yeah, the, he, in the show notes for sure yeah seriously mads was a little bit of a, a mentor to you you seem to know absolutely him pretty well. yeah, yeah yeah he um they were also they were actually the first first people that like like him and JP more mods but like uh we were we were such kids you know I think we were like 11 or 12 13 whatever and you know they would be like 19 or 18 20 and that's you know kind of a big gap at that you know at that, that age point. it yeah. is so they used to give us like you know they were like not giving up, you know, they were just like grinding you. Yeah. Giving you a hard time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, I learned a lot from that. And uh, Mods is like one of my better friends right now. And yeah, I love that guy. He's, he's awesome. He's, he's helped me with a lot of stuff like investment stuff and, or just advice and life in general. And yeah, he's a really good guy and good snowboarder. Holy shit. Yeah. I did a podcast with him. Didn't know. know, didn't know him very well. Yeah. I had met him a couple times at Anthony Vitale's house back in the day. Squamish, legendary filmer, and Mads uh, was storing his sled there, and he was there, Lonnie mm-hmm. Cock, a couple other people. Anyways, I obviously know who Mads fucking Johnson is. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I used the trans world and snowboarder were the Bible to me when I was a kid, and yeah. he was in them doing things that would just like hurt your head, like the biggest air ever <laughs> on yeah. a park jump, dude. Dude, and the, he's a, he was incredible. The, dude, yeah, I, couldn't, and, I was blown away by how cool he was. Yeah, he's he's an amazing guy. But um, speaking of the big hip airs, like. The, the world record jump he did. Oh, yeah. I saw that jump. I was like, I was standing on the lip of that thing. What? And That's it great. was, it didn't make any sense. Like, you were standing there and just like, so <laughs> you're going to, what? what? <laughs> were you like a young was kid crazy. being like, this is what I have to do dude, in the future? The cr- totally dude that that jump like pff, that was scary like nobody else wanted to step up to that thing and Didn't kazu hit it with him right no that was a different jump oh, okay i hit that jump too okay. actually the footage never got used i what um i actually that was a that was a big jump too that was huge uh but anyway mods this jump like imagine going into a jump like that like that big and it's like parked like hard like it's it's solid and and how do you how do you know the speed like you just got to go as fast as you possibly can and pray. Yeah, yeah. And he did it. It was awesome. <laughs> and he, he did, did it. it. <laughs> I remember it was like a hundred and like seventy-two feet or something like Dude, that. It like, was in. Yeah, it was insane. That was crazy. Yeah, but just like actually like seeing it on film is one thing, but like actually seeing the jump live was just it was it's a lot crazier than than what it looked on film. I'd say. Any snowboarder, skateboarder, surfer that knows anything about filming, riding a specific feature is always so much harder oh, yeah. than it looks on film. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, you go to a like a spot and you're like, this guy only front boarded this kink rail. And then yeah. you go to it and you're like, oh, my God, I yeah. would never want to <laughs> yeah. hit this. Yeah. <laughs> you go to a step down that you're like, I'd switch back seven that. And you go up there and your jacket's flapping in the wind and you're building a step down alone and the yeah. filmer's like just be careful of the thing behind you it slides off and you're like oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> you're like okay i'm gonna stop yeah. just being an asshole while i watch oh. these snowboard films a lot of the, a lot goes into them yeah that's hilarious yeah there was a there was a couple um good moments in there for sure like when i, I remember being a kid and putting you in the park mix, you know what I mean? Rightfully so. Yeah. And those hemps at all sessions just being like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Like, who else was riding at those sessions that were like notable figures at the time? Because I feel like every best European rider was there. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, and from the States, too. Like, even, that's where I met uh, Jeff Anderson, for example. Like, I met him there. He hit this, like, dude, he he was so nice, too. Like, all the other, like I said, all the other guys were kind of giving us a little bit, like, uh, you know, kids. But Jeff was like really, really nice to us. Um, I'll never forget that. But then like Kara Dillon was there. 
um, mods, JP, Roman, Gigi, uh, Heiki Sorsa, uh, Freddy Kalbermutten, UC Oksanen. I, I mean, everyone on the Burton team was there pretty much, you know, Trevor Andrew. Um, yeah. That's a heavy line. Terrier was there. I, I, every, I think everyone kind of likes it. I probably am forgetting someone if I do. I'm sorry, but there's a lot of people that, that were there. The analog crew was there. Yeah, the analog crew was there <laughs> for sure. The uninked crew was yeah. there. <laughs> but that was a really cool time. And it the reason why it ended up in Hempstead all had a lot to do with uh, the Burton team manager at the time was Norwegian. And he had some hookups in Norway. And and this guy, Lars Eriksson, my friend, also like sort of like my mentor, uh, he built all those jumps. And he was like, he was really like, those jumps are so good. Like, Hemsedal has never had jumps that good since, you know? I mean, now they're starting to get it back. Uh, there's this guy, Yuan, doing it right now, and he's he's doing it good, too. But uh, for a long time there, like, yeah, he, he passed, you know, and in an avalanche in Hemsedal. Uh, yeah. So rest in peace, Lars. But uh, he, yeah, we all miss him. But, dude, he, uh, he, he was a good dude and really good snowboarder and park builder, man. But, like, you know, you lose someone like Lars, like, at a younger age. Was that pretty devastating? Could you comprehend it at the time? Did it take you to later years to realize, like, how much of an impact he had on you? Yeah, dude. I, I think that was the first time I ever lost someone that I, like, really cared about, you know? Oh, and that's a um, big one. And it happened on, like, Christmas Eve. Oof. Yeah, so it was kind of like I was with my family, and then we just got a call, you know, like, oh, there's been an avalanche, and then... And then Lars was in it, and then we didn't hear anything, so it was kind of like a waiting game for a little bit. Like, and then we got the call that he, you know, that he they couldn't find him. They couldn't even find him, um, because uh, it was like late in the evening, and you know. But anyway, um, he, yeah, dude, he he's the guy who like took me under the wing and like introduced me to Burton. Uh, he's kind of like the guy who like you know he he kind of did a big push for me, you know, to be sitting right here and talking to you right now in Canada, you know? So, so yeah, yeah. Really miss him. And yeah, he's, he's a good dude. Shout outs to Lars. Yeah. What's his last name? Erickson. What did Lars teach you? What, what, like, what characteristics did he have that you were like, that's dope. Like if he's like a little bit of a mentor figure, what, what drew you into him? Well, um, I know I've I know I've told this story a few times before, but I kind of want to tell it real quick because um, I used to, I, I skied before I started snowboarding, and then in '97, like snowboarding blew, or in the '90s, like snowboarding was so popular in Norway, and in Hemstedal, because um, you know all the skiers had their you know events and things that snowboarders couldn't be a part of. The, the resort let the snowboarders have their private snowboard park where skiers were not allowed. Isn't that crazy? So so I remember as a kid, like, skiing past the snowboard park and, like, looking over and, like, seeing, like, a you know, a small little shitty pipe and people doing, like, f one, like a foot airs, and I would just be like, man, that looks fun, you know? Um, so when, when I got on snowboard... Um, my first time going through the snowboard park, I was so young, you know, I was, I was eight, I think I was eight. And so my dad came with me and he, he was skiing. And at the bottom of the park, you know, we got through and at the bottom of the park, there was a hip session, like a full like snowboard crew, like hiking and hitting the hip and whatever. And then, um, uh, my dad, you know, cause he's, you know, local skier, like been there forever, you know? He uh, goes ahead and he just like hits the hip, you know, classic like dad move. Like, like I'm like, dad, don't do <laughs> you know, and he hits the hip and this person at the bottom, like shooting photos, which is Lars, takes a snowball and throws it at my dad and, and my dad and him like fully get up in each other's faces and like, whoa, whoa, whoa you know, and um, it, it ended up like Lars becoming like my dad's friend and like, like him helping me, like taking me under the wing and like show him, teaching me shit 
like taking me through the park, taking me snowboarding and like teaching me how to like do backside spins, like showing me snowboard stuff, learn me, how to push me into my first wave. Like he, he meant a, a big, like great deal to me. And like, he was just a good human and he loved surfing and he loved snowboarding. Like, yeah, he's a really good dude. Well, you're making him proud right now, that's for sure. I mean, where you've come, like, he's probably just like, that's my dog. <laughs> I hope so, man. Oh, for sure, my yeah, man. Yeah, we all miss him, but yeah. yeah. I mean, those are good qualities. I mean, a lot yeah. of those that you said. Just, I mean, I like that you, the emphasis on just a good person yeah, is, is he's, important and he's overlooked a in these really days. good person, you know, and yeah, just, he was one of those guys that wanted to, like, help, help other people, you know, and, like, building a building parks and like trying to build stuff for other people to enjoy, you know? And, uh, yeah, good dude. You touched on it a little bit, but you touched on some early, uh, analog riders. When you're a young kid and you get immersed in a group of some of the greatest, um, not only talent, but style individuals, which analog was highly recognized for back then. How did that cr like group change your trajectory in snowboarding? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I as being a, like being a kid and like analog was the absolute cool, coolest thing. I I thought that was the coolest, you know. And Trevor and like that, you know, it was <laughs> I just remember like when when I like when they told me I would get on and I could start wearing analog stuff, I was the happiest kid in the world, I think. Like seriously. I, I would even like, I would, I would get these like, cause analog used to make these like crazy jackets. Like there was this one puffy jacket that I had, it was leather, but like kind of, it had like, it was like, uh, it wasn't full leather. It like was kind of hairy leather, you know? And it had like metal analog right here. And I was going snow camping one time and I was, there was no way I was not going to wear that jacket. And my dad was just like, dude. You're not wearing that jacket. That's how much I love it. I just would not want to take it off. Um, yeah, but like, yeah, Jeff Anderson, uh, Trevor Andrew, um, yeah, th those especially those two. I mean, um, uh, JP Solberg, of course, which also is like one of my favorite riders. Uh, he was a huge influence on my snowboarding in the beginning of my career. Uh, especially because like I really like park jumps and um, and rails obviously would like Jeff Anderson and um, but um, yeah I mean Jeff Jeff Anderson was a great plug especially on the rails I'll never forget his Nixon Jib Fest switch front board around the C rail yeah. always stood out to me but uh, J P Solberg like one of like the innovators of like redefining style in those early 2000s and what it should look like it was baggy pants wide stance oh yeah like boxy like he just looked like i feel like every kid back then wanted to look a little bit like jp solberg unless you were clueless and you can see in your snowboarding there there's there's some serious um the idols that you had throughout your career um shine in your snowboarding like i could pinpoint them all but i'd rather you tell me who those might have been throughout the earlier stages of your career. Yeah. Uh, well, first off in the beginning, like JP Solberg was, was definitely my, my like favorite for sure. What made him your favorite before you transitioned to a different rider? It was the way, like his, obviously his style, you know, when the boxy like style, like tweaking, like minimal tweak, but like a steady tweak, you know, and just no flailing, no movement whatsoever, you know, just like, like his switchback sevens and backside sevens were the best ones I thought. Like they were so cool. Oh, I wanted to tell before we keep talking about that. Um, mods and JP when we when we just got on Burton, they helped us set up our stance, and they made it wider and duck stance, and then they told us to put our uh, pants over the high back. And they're like, "This is what you do." <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. So that was the style, and we ran that for years, for sure. Um, but yeah, and also like, uh, back to, back to JP, uh, also him being like, um, a Norwegian writer as well, definitely had a big impact on it, but mainly just his style. And, you know, he just had like such attitude, you know, that I, you know, thought was really cool. Yeah. He definitely had a vibe. 
vibe for sure. Um, and then later, I mean, I there's so many writers that I could you know name. There's so many writers that I look up to, uh, and I love to watch snowboard. But uh, um, like Nicholas Miller, like from when I started getting older, like Nicholas Miller was like my my number one favorite writer um, because of how he uses the terrain on the mountain. And later in my career, when I actually got to like go out with him and film with him, dude, that's when I realized how good that guy actually was. Or I mean, he still is. He's not, yeah, he's not gone or anything, but, but like, I didn't realize how good he actually was until I got to ride with him. Like we would, we would go to Alaska. Uh, that was a really mem- memorable trip. Actually it was me, uh, uh, Ben Ferguson and, uh, Nicholas Mueller with absent films in Haynes. That was, that was an incredible trip. Um, but we would look at, we would look at the face and we would be like, Oh yeah. Like ride down there, jump off there, blah, blah, blah. We would ride down and then and then Mueller would come after us and just jump off of something that like didn't exist. You know? Like he would just like jump off something over here, like massive, turn around, come back up the mountain <laughs> and do like a hand plant on top of the peak and then like do some butters over some crevasses or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was worded so good. <laughs> And plant the <laughs> fucking peak. So true, man. It's like no, it's insane. Wow. Yeah, he just yeah. I don't know. He's just so like he's so light and like skinny and just light on his feet too. And you can just I don't know. Just the way he reads the terrain has been a huge inspiration on on um on my snowboarding for sure. And that's I I I still to this day like will try and try and ride somewhat similar or, or or at least I'm not going to, I'm not going to try and ride like him because that's, <laughs> that's not possible. I'm going to ride like myself, but I'm definitely inspired by his way of approaching the mountain. I mean, like those earlier years, if you are inspired by Jeff Anderson and, you know, Terrier and JP Solberg yeah, and Nicholas Terrier, Mueller Terrier and you for sure, Trevor Andrew, you try to look like those riders, you end up failing, but then at 22 or whatever, you're like, you were influenced by them, so you have like their little bit of spice. Yeah, and those early influences that a rider has gets branded on you. Like if you were, if your favorite snowboarder ever was, I don't know, Travis Parker. Yeah. Later yeah. in life, it's like that shines, as you mm-hmm. can tell. If your favorite snowboarder ever was Keegan Vilaker or Lucas Magoon or Chris Bradshaw, it's like you go ride the park with some young Japanese rider, and you're like, you loved Chris Bradshaw. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like For you, sure. you know that you can yeah. see it in their riding. They yeah. no longer, they can't look like that individual. They look like themselves, but like their influence plays a big role. So it's important to look up to these, you know, mods, and you have like that whole crew, mm-hmm. and like. Hemp's it all Norway, like that is where it, things are popping back then. So to have that mentorship and to have those people as your biggest inspirations mm-hmm. is it just shows how, I mean, you being one of the greats now, it's like you look at that and that helps you have a healthy career to some degree. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's very well said. Um, yeah. And also like we talked about, um, like when you get to the point where you're not like trying to like look like somebody else but uh, i mean like obviously inspired but just doing it your own way kind of you know that's good that's that's the best way yeah that's that's the only way it right? is yeah but but the- i mean you can still try and like you know everybody has their you know role models or you know inspirations or but yeah so, so like you're riding down the mountain you ride with like some of the greats now like you're riding down the hill with you know, Mark McMorris and Ben Ferguson and, you know, the list goes on Brock and everybody else that you're getting to snowboard with. Every once in a while, this is how I feel. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, and you can speak on that. But if Ben does a really cool frontside seven, the next time I go snowboarding, sometimes I'm like, I kind of want to fucking 
tweak like that little, you know, that bend did <laughs> yeah. the other day. Yeah. Like I saw your switchback five today and yeah. I saw how you came into the landing, like that access. Yeah. And I was literally like the next switchback five. I want to land just like that. Like, I guess. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so I sure. mean, like you're still no, inspired by, you know, people, but you can't, you can't bite their shit because it doesn't work. But I'm like, I still feel like for, for visualizing the trick, like we were talking about earlier, it's like if a good snowboarder that you look up to if you watch their shit enough you can visualize the way they're doing it and then you do it and so it's not them doing it it's you doing it but it's like with their flavor you yeah know what I for mean? sure it's yeah. a little bit of a yeah. bite but yeah. it's like it show it's almost like to me it's like a pat on the back you know what i yeah. mean if someone i think it's pretty cool to be honest with you like I get, it it's not I mean it's not a bite like everybody has just done this tricks pretty much. You know, Everything's been like, done. Can't be like, oh he's biting my style. He's doing <laughs> backs up five selfies biting my style. You know, it's like uh well everybody on this mountain <laughs> was doing that. Oh that's funny. Um you blew up at a very young age. Very young. You've been a pro snowboarder for over 20, 25 years now. It's been your entire life's ride. Looking back, were there challenges to turning pro and getting money and spotlight and fame at such a young age? Dude, I was so lucky um, to get picked up by Burton because Burton just ha has had my back since day one, like through thick and then like it, it i i can't thank him enough you know and jake like dude for believing in me and like yeah it's um yeah i i yeah i can't thank him enough it, like i got on the team and as soon as i got on the team the um, well i was 11 when when they like found me and they were like hey dude or they talked to my dad and they're like we're we want to see if you want to have your son on our team you know and then when I turned 12, that's when I got my first contract. And then I started traveling, you know, and then we started traveling to the f the first international competition I did was in Livigno, Italy in 2001. Uh, no, 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 no. 2002. Sorry. <laughs> nice. Because um, I was 12 and I'm born in 90. So that's that makes sense. Uh, and from there on, it just kind of skyrocketed like they they really believed in us and they had like the Burton Smalls team. It was uh Olivia Gitler, um, Tommy Emanuelson, Luke Matrani, and Frederick Auspo and myself. And that was like the Smalls team, and they would just like send us everywhere. And it was awesome. <laughs> we didn't have to do school. Well, I mean, we had homework with us, but we didn't really do any. Um, no parents. We had team managers that like looked after us and and man, it it like we really like like having five kids together traveling around and just all we had to think about was snowboarding. I swear that made us so much better at what we were doing. For sure, 100%. You know, like, and and Burton gave us that opportunity, you know, and they believed in us and, uh, yeah, included us. And, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's awesome. So I've been, I, yeah, I've been very fortunate. I mean, I, uh, you know, I've been working, I've been, I've been working too, you know, I mean, I'm working my ass off and, but it also was my dream, you know, uh, like growing up. I remember, I remember being a kid. I don't know if I've ever said this, to, but uh, <clears throat> I remember being a kid, like in the very beginning when I started snowboarding and I would be in bed and before bed, and I, no, before going to sleep. And I would just be like, like I want to be, the, I want to be the best snowboarder. You know, I want to be the best snowboarder in the world, you know, like saying shit like that to myself. Um, and, um, and then, yeah, dude, getting on first though, just to put that in there as well. Uh, when I first got on the Burton team, it was just like, it was like, it it was so it was like on like it was surreal you know like we're on Burton like the like the catalogs that we slap like, yourself we're, in the you face know, this is a dream like, where it's like is this is this really happening right now you know I I'll never forget that it it took took a while before that really like you know it took some time for it to like sink in but I feel like one I of get the carried most, away here. no I I like that you get carried away but I think that the touch point there that I would like to put some emphasis on is that you being a little kid and 
saying to yourself, like, I want to be a pro. I want to be the best. Yeah. If I had any advice to anybody in the world, it's like your thoughts become your reality to some extent. And it's so important to put that out into the world as somebody who I feel like I'm a little bit negative towards myself. I think that I honestly manifested exactly where I got in snowboarding. I always said that I would be good. Yeah. I'm like, I want to be like kind of good and, you know, kind of like fuck around and have like decent style and like, but I don't want to be like the, I, <laughs> I couldn't be the best. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's where I ended up. Cause that's literally where I like what I put it out into the world day in well, and day yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like, if you genuinely tell yourself and you put the work in, you know, you can, yeah. you can achieve greatness. Like you really can even like, and I feel like the 30 to 40 year olds, I feel like a lot of them are like, Oh, I've, I've grown past the point of return and yeah. now I can't do awesome things. It's like, don't tell yourself that. Cause that's exactly, <laughs> yeah, that screws yeah, yourself. It, it is true. At it, 50, at 60. Like if you really start telling yourself something, I really think that that becomes your reality. You tell yourself that you're sick every day. You're going to get sick. For it's sure. like, it's like you wake up in the morning and you're like, I'm going to work out today, you know, or like totally. today I'm, I'm going to try and eat healthy, <laughs> you know, anything <laughs> totally. today. I'm not going to try and drink <laughs> a six pack of beer. But if you identify as somebody who drinks beer, cause you like that persona and that image and it goes along with who you are, you will continue to do that because yeah. you're like, that's who I am for sure. But if you start identifying at a young age or at a whatever age, I'm going to be one of the greatest snowboarders. You start telling yourself that every day. You become that. Yeah. If you think that you're a fucked up drug addict and you believe that story, you will continue to be a fucked up drug addict. For sure. You need to like look past the totally. negative stuff and look into like dig, dig a little deeper into your dreams. You know, I've always loved the somebody once told me that like you're the main character in the movie. Yeah, dude. Which I like is, that. It's the best I one like ever. That. So yeah. if you were watching the Truman movie show. Yeah, like if you were that's a great movie. <laughs> if you were if you're watching the movie, would you be like, Mickle, you are killing it. You know what I mean? You're being nice to people, Lars would yeah. be proud of you, you're ripping, you're snowboarding, you're making people laugh, you're making people smile. Life's good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or are you watching the Mickle movie and you're being like, dude, this guy's gotta make some changes, you know? For and sure. if you know that, then like that's your that's your calling. That's like I'm sure there's people that are listening to us banter about this right now that are like Dude, how is my movie if I'm the main character? And dude, it's a great and, way to help you navigate the seas of life. For sure. And if you're not happy with the movie, well, then that's a great start. That's And, and the movie yeah. is never fucking... It, I know. Over. It's not over, dude. It's just the beginning. And every movie needs a low point. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. If you're at the high for point sure. right now, a low point's coming. Yeah. You know, no good sure. movie is just one big, high, action-packed movie. There needs to be a yeah. low point where it slows down, where there's a bit more storyline, and the guy's boring, and he's having a sip of coffee, and you're like... This is the least, my least favorite part in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then what happens, you know, a bunch of crazy shit happens. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? A bunch of crazy I shit. I like that, dude. That's really cool. I wow, really we, like just, well, we just took a U-turn we right did. there <laughs> off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to... Oh, uh, yo, uh, speaking of, can I have a beer? All right, yeah, we got a little carried away. That's okay, okay though. Either. But that's, I do like that. part of it. I like that one. Yeah, I do. I Same. I, that's Cheers, dude. Cheers, man. Uh, thank you to Gibbons Apre Lager for these delicious beers. And our these next question that we have for you is, how many video parts have you filmed? Mm. Wow. I don't know. You I never need counted? To, I, can't, I never counted. I don't know why I never did that. Um, Do you think over 20? Do you think you have more video parts than Devin Walsh? Ooh, how many does he have? Dude, like you know, 40s. I've pretty much done, I've pretty much been in a, a movie project every year except the years I was injured. Since 2001, since uh, White Balance? Yeah, and before that too, I was like in, well, those were smaller projects, you know. Um, the White Balance one was like the first, like biggest, like the big That's, one. Oh, you're in yeah. standard. Yeah. That's that, a huge Yeah, part. that was crazy. Um. 24 years then missed one part 23 and those are yeah and i was injured one year broke my humorous skateboarding that's a special that category not, not so humorous over tw yeah totally over <laughs> over 20 video parts is a special group There's i think not so i i would have to like uh that's actually i can't yeah i should i don't know that's that you should tally that up yeah I, I mean like I'm gonna there's trying to figure that out there's people i think Devin. 
Gigi. This is off the top of my head. Yourself. Kazu, Pat Moore. There's a Blavelt. Like all from Mikey too. Yeah, Renz. Renzi. Yeah. yeah, Travis. Mikey. Oh, and then yeah, Travis. Dude. Travis might be. No, that might be the. Dude. I think because Devin stopped filming. Like I think 2017 was his last part. Yeah. But he had stuff since like. Like his white balance part would have been like 1992 and like before like I think he made a movie with a mouse yeah. called Milk, but then there was Child Games and a couple, and I think those were like 93, 94. Yeah. So that's 20. Yeah, there's a lot of there's there's a group of like 10 or 15 writers that probably have 20 video parts in A plus um, respected movies like a, a Mac Dog motion picture or yeah, like, like like standard legit stuff. Yeah, like legit. So yeah, hey, well, cheers, man. Cheers. Uh, uh, to to that milestone in in your life. Yeah, <laughs> way to Cheers, go. Dude. Oh man, this is perfect right now. How do you not get washed up? Like tired of it? No, tired of it? Maybe speak on tired of it, and also just like kids still really fuck with what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, how do you? What would your advice be to people to to not get washed up old head syndrome? What do you think the recipe for success in that? Uh, well, <laughs> no, no, I, I, I think, well, what I've been, what I've been trying to do, uh, my whole career is always to like evolve and I'm not just saying like trying to do bigger tricks or like that stuff, but like just kind of change up your writing a little bit and, and dip in a new, um, you know like avenues f- avenues thank you um like for example i i used to i i i, w- I would like hit street rails when i was a kid you know I, I was doing that and i pipe uh slope style and then more and more slowly getting in the backcountry as like my favorite you know and obviously everybody powder is kind of like the the dream for all of us i do believe um for me my career was always headed towards writing powder because that was like what I dreamt of doing. Really? When even yeah. when you were younger? Yeah, I mean, Crazy. definitely. Like you know, because like, I mean, uh, JP Solberg and those guys like hitting park jumps. Obviously, that was like I was like I want to do that too. I, you know, I want to do those tricks. I want to want to get on that, but um. For me, it's always been to like challenge yourself in new ways, you know, where it's like, especially like for me, it was, I used to hit a lot of like powder kick, like kickers in the backcountry, and then slowly starting to dip more over to like hitting stuff naturally. And then slowly starting to like do more line writing. And then, you know, from there on, it's just like, change it up a little bit. You know, if you're doing a, a back three, four years in a row with the same grab, you know, maybe it's time to do a new grab on your back three, you know, <laughs> or we were talking about that today on the lift, but, um, or like ride more switch, you know? Um, I think, I think just like challenging yourself too and trying new things and going new places. And it's one way to like keep going without like, you know, getting tired of it or stagnant. Yeah. I think that... Am I answering the yeah, question yeah. correctly? Cause um, I'm going to give you a 9 out of 10 on that answer. And the reason why I'm not going to okay. give you a 10 is because okay. the only time I disagree with what you just said yeah. is that if somebody has a staple trick, yeah, don't delete your staple trick because you're like, oh, I've been doing it for too long. You yeah. know what I mean? If you have like a really sick frontside 7 tail uh-huh. and you're like, oh, I've been doing it for too long. I'm just going to switch it up. It's like people love that thing about you. Yeah, it's like... And it's, you don't need to get rid of it. For sure. I, you know what? I, I agree with you. For the most part. I agree, I agree with you. It's like it's like watching Terry do a, you know, a chicken wing mech twist, you know? I feel like the one of the best examples, and it's not from snowboarding, which is, you know, maybe not the greatest example, but it's the one that comes to he- my head. Andrew Reynolds, frontside flip. It's just oh, like yeah, dude. everybody, whether you snowboard, skateboard, or surf, it's like everybody, everybody knows, knows about it. that. Nobody does like wants him to just not do a frontside flip anymore. <laughs> yeah. They don't care if it's small or just, you know, oh. th- how he does it. They don't care. Just give me the frontside flip. <laughs> dude, that was almost like uh, Nicholas and his butters. 
we talked about the butter today. Yeah. One of the hardest tricks to do like, good. And like the way like Nicholas really perfected it, you mm-hmm. know. I remember when when he got on um, GNU, I think he he told me it was kind of like joking, but I I think he said like, oh yeah, they just want me to do methods and butters, you know, <laughs> just keep doing that and then you're good, <laughs> you know, because like his methods and butters were, I mean, timeless. It's hard to perfect those simple things and make them timeless yeah, it is it's like sure. we were trying to shoot turns today as like kind of a joke yeah with rob and it was like i like none of the photos were turning out and i was like and rob was getting kind of flustered i was like dude shooting a good turn is very hard especially a good turn especially photo. in the park when there's like <laughs> a thousand tracks around <laughs> That's besides the point. I was not gonna <laughs> leave. I wasn't. I was gonna leave that out of here. But uh, yeah, totally. But yeah, it I is get, hard get. to like uh, perfect those micro things. Like you know, l- yeah. like you were saying, a butter. Mm-hmm. A lot of people overlook the butter. They're more interested in doing something like a cab nine, and they land that. And then what do they do after the cab nine? They land in the backcountry. They do a stupid lame butter, and they ruin <laughs> yeah. the shot. <laughs> it's the panic butter. Oh. Land something. Oh, what do I do? Butter. Best best trick you've ever done on a step down. Completely stomp it. Immediately go into the worst butter ever. <laughs> completely ruin the shot. <laughs> totally. Everyone's like, you just dunked your head in the snow. Yeah. Like we had. Uh, there was one year where um, <laughs> it was me and Ben, uh, and we kept doing these like crails. It was like we call it a panic crail. And I don't remember. I think I think it was Justin Eels that was just like, guys, you guys got to stop doing those crowds. <laughs> like shout every, out Eels, dude. Like every shout every out. time we would like do a line or something, it was like crail. I think I think Ben had a good one where he did like four crails in one run or something. You know, where he just like. Which is like, I'm going to write on my nose, like, no crayon. Like, like Big Air don't. Jair's back threes. <laughs> it's like, dude, a hundred and one after run. Call us. <laughs> I don't know. Let's chalk them up, dude. And then, like, oh. the burden rudder arm, like, a couple people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple yeah. people started oh. it and looked good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, like, a good dude, look. And Terry then kind of had. Yeah, he had, had a bit of a like, rudder. A little bit. You know, Nicholas. you know, um, have you ever heard of that guy in Norway? He's like a legend. His name was Toman. He had the white beard. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. He, he, he was a good friend. And um, I was riding with him. It was just me and him one time. And we're going down the hill. And I was kind of doing that, you know. And he was just like, oh, looks like you're holding a purse. <laughs> He was like, <laughs> he's just basically telling me like he wanted, he was like, you got to keep your hands straight down, dude. It was so funny. I kind of go, I kind of like uh Ben Ferg's attack. It looks like at any yeah. time like, he's going to smash through like a brick wall. Dude, he's just like, seriously, he's just like ready to yeah rip somebody apart. I love that I, riding style. I almost feel like, it, yeah, dude, I'm a big like Ben Ferguson fan. Also like one of my be- better friends, you know? Yeah, big, um, I'm a huge fan. Ben Ferg, and sick. It's funny though, like you watch him ride sometimes, and it's like it's almost like it looks like he's going faster than he is going because of his like attack stance. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's sick. Yeah, it, it looks really good. He does. He does it very well. I like how the how different, but um, both very talented. You got Ben. And then you got Gabe, you know? Yeah. Totally different dude, styles, yeah, yeah. but Seriously. so much talent. Like, dude, yeah, Gabe's dude. snowboarding is yeah, mind unreal. Yeah, those guys. Really, two, really good. Two favorite video parts you've ever filmed? Ooh. Well, um, I th- the first one I'll go with is Burton 13. Great part. Um... That one, I was I was very happy with that one. Like looking at it now, or for that time being in my career, I think that was like, you know, uh, hitting those, you know, the trees here um, in Whistler, and and kind of mixing it up with a little bit of park and and powder, kind of had like a a hole, you know. Um, I actually got a video part of the year. Transworld on that one. I didn't. I didn't 
do enough homework, so I actually didn't know that. Yeah. And so, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Way to go. That was yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I what remember did that feel like. Oh man, that was huge. I'm I I never gotten any awards like that at that time, and yeah, that was big. I remember going up on stage, and I think I was pretty drunk. I remember uh, uh, Brian Knox. He was like, "All right." We got to stay, you know, not too much drinking today. And I think he knew that I was getting the award. But, yeah, I, I, I should have maybe understood that something was going on. But I went I went up there and I remember I was so nervous in front of everybody. I don't even remember <laughs> what I said up there. Oh, but, yeah. Those awards were big back in the day. Yeah, you man. Know? Yeah, that was, yeah, that was definitely meant a lot, you know. One of the coolest sad things that, that's gone. Sad that, yeah, sad that that's not around anymore. Really sad. I kind of have a feeling that stuff is going to come back. I I hope so, man. <laughs> it, it, we're just the plan is to scale airtime so we can do it, but do it proper, right? Dude, like way be, really way bigger and better. Like that's what really snowboarders deserve. You know what I yeah. mean? I want people rolling in the red carpet, and it's just like there's just champagne and limos, and like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everybody's getting, everyone's having a good time, oh, and everything's awesome. covered. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I'm going to come up with that money, but um, I have some Ethereum, you know, some of that cryptocurrency. Yeah. I've lost oh. it all, but I, if I get it back one day, it'll okay. be, it should go up. And then okay, I'm, sounds I'm, good. I'll, let you, I'll let you know what happens there. Oh, that sounds <laughs> good. Everybody has the one friend that lost a bunch of cryptocurrency. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm that friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's really funny, actually. Second video part. Uh, second video part. I, this is kind of tough because. I did really like my video parts with um, Absin Films, but I think I'm going to go with the most recent one uh, with Beyond Metal's movie. Um, the reason is because that's kind of where I feel like like that type of writing is more where I am in my life right now. And also I got to choose my own song. Nice. That's I, that is one of the best feelings ever. Yeah, it was really nice editing with Kevin and those guys there. They're they're good. Beyond Metals, uh, who in that crew? Um, a bunch of amazing snowboarders. But yeah. if you had to pick, let's say one or two it's of your faves. Oh, faves! Well, yeah. Tor and Kevin. You know, they're like those are those guys are such good homies. Nice. Have you been yeah. friends for a long time? Yeah, I've known them for forever. Really, like, admire what they have achieved. It's so cool. And, like, the whole gang they have. Like, everyone, like, all the writers on the team are so cool. Like, oh, we we randomly bumped into them on, in Japan, too, while we were there. That was pretty funny. That did not end well. <laughs> it ended well, but, I mean, we it ended up being a party. Anyway, um... <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> That's where it ended. Uh, you went, you ran into Kevin and you were like, what up? And then yeah. you blacked out in Japan. And that's why the story ended. Yeah, that's exactly. Because you guys exactly. went and partied. And yeah. Where did you party in, in uh, Sapporo? This was in Tokyo. Oh, what? You like, guys went to Tokyo? We went to Tokyo and we're in a store and Ulrich just, he's just like, I heard someone who was like, Mikkel? And I was just like, Ulrich? <laughs> Holy shit. Do you want to party? You guys are here? Uh, do you want to party? Would you like to party? <laughs> like- and then we linked up with everyone. Yeah. No, but I really um I really admire what they what they have achieved. And dude, I have so much respect for their snowboarding. And uh yeah, they got a really cool thing going on. And yeah. I love that they make movies and just do their own thing. I think it's rad. So Big ups to those guys. Yeah, I'll give that a big old hell yeah. I I agree. Yeah. Huge huge That's fan. Cool. I mean, even like Sebe to Buck, that whole that yeah, whole crew. Sebe, dude, everyone in that I, crew is. Yeah. And they're all very talented. You can definitely tell a lot from like seeing like a good snowboarder if you ride with them on the resort. Oh. The, or like how they are, you know, how their they, approach. They're yes, exactly. Oh yeah, you can see a lot from somebody that's just like going to hit a bank. Yeah. You know. Yeah. For sure. Like, yeah. Okay. Where are you at right now? And you're like, <laughs> yeah. okay, about fifteen pounds overweight, and yeah. it looks like he hasn't stretched in a month. All right, <laughs> that's where you're at. <laughs> that's where I'm at right now. Same. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> take us through a couple of your favorite shots that you've ever filmed, and a little bit more detail. Maybe who is there? Maybe something that uh that that stands out to you? Because I mean, you have hundreds of clips, but. Ooh. Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Um, just 
out of like top of my head right now. Um, I think this was during. Oh yeah, this was actually the first year when I came to Canada to film in Canada. Uh, I filmed for In Color, um, and I had a a backside 180 kind of backlit. Um, that shot I really like. A back one, it's like a step down back one, and it's all like um, silhouette. Uh, Scott Surface actually got a cover of it, so that was pretty cool. That one, that I one. Know is... the clip well. You know it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I know the photo. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great shot. Um, maybe another one. I had a line. It was for One World. I did a line on chocolate bowl um it was i was wearing a yellow kit that mikey called the banana i was called he called me banana man the entire season so much that it came to a point where i actually got annoyed i mean (laughs) i was like i was like mikey this is actually not not fun anymore i was like okay i'm sorry (laughs) that sounds about the mikeyest thing i've ever heard in my life oh no (laughs) No, but I really like that line shot. I kind of, it's like on the looker's right of the chocolate bowl. And I like cut underneath the cornice and then make my way onto the spine and then down. Uh, from from this year the, um, uh, at Natural Selection, just to get a little bit more recent, um, the, the front five uh, during the contest, I was very happy with that one too. I was judging. Yeah. In case people don't know, I don't know how I got that job, but I landed on this job of of judging my favorite snowboarders. Yeah. Maybe because I have a sl- I have a little bit of a skill set out there, so I actually know how difficult some of the maneuvers are. Yeah. And that front five fucking indie to that half cab was yeah. one of the greatest things I've ever wit like all of the camera angles don't add up to like the angle I saw it from. I it was think, like yeah, so I- like they're great. Yeah, I think if you had um, damn Mickle, that was sick. If you had the Barbie angle, I think you would you would have seen a little bit better the half cab too, because the half cab was more of a drop off. The drone kind of made it seem like it compressed. Yeah, it didn't it didn't really look as crazy from the drone. Our angle was insane. But then here's the crazy thing about angles. Life is when you're filming snowboarding, it's all about angles. Yeah, you know that's why they pay. People like Gabe and Leyland and Rusty the big yeah, bucks. Yeah, exactly. So that so they can find the angle to make the feature look the best. When you're Absolutely. judging and you're on a Barbie angle, because your run before that, mm-hmm. you rode in and did that front three from our angle. I remember mm-hmm. being like, that looks like nothing. And oh, then yeah. and then I go down and Blake Paul's yelling at me, like, how did that not get scored higher? Like, are you guys closing your eyes? I was like, his front five thing looked fucking insane because it's a yeah. It started wrapping around there, so you get a little bit more of there was some rock exposure too. Yeah. Oh man, that like it was the best angle ever. Yeah. But it just shows you angles <laughs> totally. really change your perspectives for sure. on on well, I mean, yeah, on video clips. Absolutely. And that's why I didn't score you higher on that first run three. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It ended up working out anyway. The GoPro angle, I think the, maybe it's the oh, GoPro or the drone it's, angle it's made drone. it seem like. It's the drone. The drone yeah, angle, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my God, that's what you were going over? Like, that yeah. was amazing. Like, but I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, while we were talking here, because that was kind of, I, I have one more that I, I guess I would like to mention. Uh, that was filming for uh, Absent Films Turbo Dojo, and I did a Switchback 10 on a kicker in Alaska, and it's like sunset. And it has like, it was pretty crazy. We It was me, Kimi Fasani, um, uh, Cocard, and Ben, and we built that thing, and we were loose and light, but and we lost light and then half an hour later the sun came back on it and it was just this like perfect like one beam on the kicker and we're like we gotta hit it and then the session started and um i did one front three that like i had to hit it first and i did one front three and like went way too far but uh still managed to land it and then 
Second second try I did is switch back ten and landed. Um and that yeah, that that's definitely one too that I will never forget. What's the when you're clocking into something like a switch back ten, you're in Alaska, it's the end of the day, it's this last sliver of light. Like, are you just like I'm doing this, like, what's the motivation? Are you like, I just want to do the switchback 10? Or are you like, I need a new contract? Or like, uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure. No, dude, the, the jump was actually like, it was very well built, the jump. It was really like, not too dangerous. I was, it was pretty big, you know, but um, super fun. Oh, like that. a fun jump. Like a fun jump. Like you but hit it, was, it once it was, and you're it, like, It was Ooh. scary. It was yeah. scary, but, but it was, but it, once you hit it, you know, you know, it's always scary the first time, like pretty much always. You know, not scary, but it's, you always have a little bit like, okay, here we go. There's a little bit of unknown. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then once you hit it, you're like, okay, that was fun, you know? Uh, but yeah, it was kind of magical. And then, you know, being like uh, Hostinik was just hanging out of the helicopter and filming. So it's all like doors off, you know? End of an era. Yeah. Like you just like he's clicking his heels out of the helicopter and like, okay, and he's just this, you know, helicopter but like fuff, 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 and you're going down there like but you can't really hear it once you're going, then it kinda goes silent. You know? Yeah, that's the that's the that's when you know you're in that flow, you're in the zone. Yeah, you're in the zone. You know, at first he's like you can hear him clicking his heels above you and you're like, Jesus, <laughs> yeah. calm down, dude. Okay, I'm ready. And then you drop in and it's like swoop. Yeah, it's quiet, it's and you're just kind of nuts, actually. Oh, it's crazy. Even even like when you hit hit a feature in the backcountry and you do the count, do you ever hear anybody yelling, like three, two, one? You know, there's sometimes where I've been thinking about it, like, oh, am I gonna hear him yell three, two, one right now? And then you never hear it. Have you ever thought about that? No, not really. Yeah, maybe we'll hear it now because now we're. Thinking about it. You mean like I don't hear them on the radio? I mean, it's, it's no. I mean, if you're hitting the jump, oh, okay. and somebody's like by the jump. Oh, I never the jump. hear that part. Exactly. That's, no, that's what I'm blacked saying. Out. Yeah, you you go in that like zone, and then it's kind of crazy. Depending on the feature too, like the gnarlier it gets, the more that probably oh, yeah. becomes quiet. Yeah, because you're so focused on your objective. Yeah. On that note, we got a Patreon question from Garrett Baker. Uh, thanks to everybody who supports us on the Patreon. It means the world. You guys are the best. Um, what's the gnarliest thing you've ever done on a snowboard? Ooh. I I One thing that was kind of gnarly, actually, that I did once was... Um, it was at X Games. It was Big Air, and that was the year when, when like, uh, they built a jump for Torstein to do the triple. And I remember I showed up there and I was already like kind of like over the whole like um, flipping stuff. And the jump, I did not like the jump at all. And I was doing my like flat spin stuff. And I know like snowboarding was, you know, evolving and, and that's fine. But I was just kind of like stuck in my thing at, the, at, you know, at that time. And uh, I did my tricks and I didn't really get high scores. And then so I was just up there. I never tried this before. And on an icy jump, I was just like, I'm just going to try a double backside rodeo stalefish. And I just I just went for it and just hucked a <laughs> double backside rodeo stalefish. Completely didn't see it. I didn't know where I was, I think, uh, at that point. And fully landed on my ass. And just, you know, you know how painful that is when, you know, the one... One, one, one goes to the one side and the other goes to, the, yeah, it was bad. I think that's one of the more gnarly, is it gnarly? That was a stupid gnarly thing, you know. Perfect. <laughs> I'm glad you extracted. The really, stupid gnarly. really, really hurt my ass on that one. What's the gnarliest thing you've ever witnessed? Ooh, that was another uh, question by Garrett Baker. Can that be a skier? Yeah, of course. Um, this. This or last winter, we were we were snowmobiling across the glacier in Pemberton, and there was these lines that I have ridden before. And right next to that, those lines, there's this huge cliff with like a cornice on top of it, uh, which you would you would never think of being on top of that. <laughs> you look at it and go, "Fuck and, that!" Yeah, you're like you wouldn't even like. There's you know. 
And then I'm like going across the glacier and you know, you're kind of like looking around and I'm just like, is that a, is that, is that a person on top of that? Like cornice cliff thing up there. And dude, this skier is on top of this massive cliff. It's a massive cliff onto a little shelf onto a massive cliff onto a little shelf. From your angle, let's just go rough estimation for size of cliffs. Oh, this is like huge. Like, like 30 foot cliff to well, 30 foot well, cliff? Oh, maybe. Well, you got to think about this too. It was like cliff to like cliff, pretty steep cliff, pretty steep. Like you're going to go so fast, you yeah. know? So I don't know how big, maybe like at least 10, 10, 15, maybe onto like another 10, only like uh, eight to another eight or more than bigger than that it's got to be bigger than that actually eight feet i'm like buddy I was that's dro- not i'm th- i'm thinking meters oh okay. oh wow so huge oh no so like the first cliff probably would have been like 30 feet 40 feet maybe like eight meters okay eight meters yeah into like a five meter oh you know into like yeah. like these cliffs are huge and and not a lot of space to like land a skier could do this with the hard boots you know a snowboarder would never i don't think anyone would want to try that line but anyway, we're going across the glacier, and I'm just like, what is that guy doing up there? And then I'm like, oh, shit, he's going. And then he goes, and he, like, sends a bunch of slough off the, the cliff uh, to, like, I think to make it, because it looks cool. And then he jumps off the cliff, and the wind catches his slough and goes right in. Like, so he gets completely white-roomed midair. He lands... And just shoots out of the next cliff, loses both his skis, and does I don't know how many I don't know how many flips he did down this face. We thought we witnessed somebody die. Like we we like it was actually it was actually kind of bad. Like it was it was scary. Like we pinned it over there. And and the guy was fine. He was just like it was he wasn't fine. But he was, he was alive. He had terminal velocity he in his brain. Alive. <laughs> and he had one ski, like it, was, it looked like two French fries, like in the, it was, it, that was, that was the gnarliest thing I've ever seen. On, it was, well, it was like, it was scary. Like I, I actually thought I witnessed somebody die. So that part kind of was not fun. You yeah, know, but it's, then, it's always funny when somebody's well, he, not Well, he's fine. Dead. Yeah, now, and then now you're it's like, like fine. <laughs> That's how I've always looked at it. Like if someone takes a vicious ragdoll, there's yeah. no laughing. It's serious until they come over and then they're like, fuck, that sucked. Yeah, and then that you're like, funny. okay, you're fine. So like, yeah, that <laughs> no, was hilarious. Off. You yeah. caught your edge on the takeoff. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh, oh, I hope those answers were good enough. No, those were super good. Um, so so in that, I thought there was a couple shots that, uh, that you were going to say. But like this... You have a, that cab ten that you did was really sick. I mean, I know it's the park oh. jump era, but that clip was a banger for back um, then. In I don't know, you cab nine it and then you cab oh, ten. Oh, that's it. that's in thirteen, I think. Yeah, but like Isn't that it? cab ten is like, yeah. it's not like a hucked, like not land good. Like you catch a little bit on your toe edge. Like it is a very in controlled cab ten, and there's not a lot of cab tens in the back country. Thanks. Was, I can. It was a jump on a roll. Yeah, which are now it is. lame. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I, but that was that, a beautiful cab dad. You know, I I know you know where that jump is. I know the jump. Yeah, uh, it was pretty funny because when I hit that jump the first time, and we, a few years later, what do you call it? I don't even call it. Oh, it's Project X. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, same. That's what we call it. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, cool. That's good. Yeah. Um. Well, it's funny when a jump like that. And Project X, like on a year where you're like, you're on the search and you're like, oh, we can't find anything. And then you're like, should we go back to Project X? And build should, that same. Jump on a roll? roll? Should, we, <laughs> should we jump off a roll right now and get some. I mean, just get some. Ser- <laughs> I mean, if you can't find anything yeah, and like for you sure. got to, like totally, like make it happen for sure. Yeah. But, but that, that jump, like that's a, at least, at least that roll jump has like, the you know the nice rock feature above and it kind of has a rock underneath it so it kind of makes it a little bit more special you know instead of just like all white roll on just to give it a little bit of <laughs> how props. wide is too wide of a jump in the backcountry mm. i've seen some wide ones and they I, just 
I don't I I don't like I I think wide jumps just kind of looks a little weird. Oh, totally, dude. You know? <laughs> it looks super weird. <laughs> it's it's kind of 15 funny feet wide. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? There's like a like a fine line between like too skinny and like too too wide. It's like you got it. <laughs> like a too skinny jump like a too skinny jump too looks also really weird. We call them and floor jumps. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> That's hilarious. She built like a really skinny yeah. jump with Leyland one <laughs> yeah. time, and so it's just stuck. <laughs> I know. That's hilarious. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe a board length is like kind of good. Yeah. yeah. I think you know? like, I think eight Depends feet on if how. it's big. Yeah. If you got a, like my board is like a 170, so it's like a little wider. I mean, if you're going to hit Chad's but gap, if you're doing maybe like, make it 12 feet. If, yeah. But if you're doing like two board lengths, then it kind of starts well first of all you're gonna have to dig so much more snow yeah my least favorite part about filming yeah like yeah the the, yeah big builds yeah we haven't done a lot of those lately it's been really nice yeah because we're all just like uh just want to ride more yeah we're just not inspired by that 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 whole approach and maybe on that note uh i can ask you that what are your thoughts in general about what, where snowboarding is moving. Are you hyped? Are you disappointed? Are you more excited than ever? Are you like, what the hell? Uh, no, I'm, I think it's, I, I like where snowboarding is going. I, um, I had a time in my career and that was at the end of my, uh, competitive, um, career. <laughs> um, where, when, when, started to get into like the flips and like the the corks and like like everybody everybody did backside double 10 like everybody did it and you go to a contest and i would when i would when i would go to contest this none of the judges noticed this i think but every single slope saw contest i went to i did a different run like changed it up every time and and all the other well i was probably not the best strategy but <laughs> but but like everybody would do just do the same thing you know every contest same run you always knew what was like it was kind it kind of like so from the compet and and one more thing um at the end of my competitive time also a few of my friends that I was riding with wasn't competing anymore and then the Olympics was starting to come around and they were going to do slope style Olympics. And I did not want to do the Olympics. Um, and, and there was coaches involved and which was so weird to me for some reason, because at, I was used to being at the top of, you know, the contest with my homies and just like, yo, like have a good run. And like, like that kind of thing. And then, it kind of became this thing where people were like separated because they were on a team with a country. And then it, the, the like homey thing was kind of gone. Uh, that's one thing that I disliked. Uh, and then all the, the, you know, aerial skiing type of like where snowboarding was moving into. And at the time I hated it. Uh, cause that's not the way I looked at, that's not the way I looked at snowboarding. It's not what I like grew up watching, you know? Um, but, but now, uh, honestly, I think it's great. <laughs> nice. I like yeah. that. You're like, I hated it, but now I'm like spinning as yeah, much no, as you but can. I, I, yeah. I was just, I think I, I just had a time in my life where I got a little bit annoyed on things. And I think it also had something to do with that. I didn't really want to be doing that. And, and that kind of, and but um that's an honest way to look at it though i like that yeah you're I, like i hate this and then you're like wait do i really hate this or do, do i just not want to do a switch ex- back 16 exactly triple cork exactly and and like being that whole what what the contest scene was like turning into turning you know into, yeah so i didn't like that progression of the contest scene when i was in it but uh but right now like for me I think snowboarding. I think it's great what snow what snowboarding is. You know, it's it's so impressive. Holy smokes! Like the the stuff those guys got to do nowadays, and the like the slope style events and the half pipe, dude, it's it's nuts. You know, um, women snowboarding is so fun to watch these days. Like like 
Zoe, when she did like recently, she did like a switch switch backside twelve like tail or something, and I was just like, that was so sick. Yeah, it was. Like it what? Was. Yeah, you gotta go do that in the backcountry or something. Like that. That was yeah. That was really cool. Uh, but yeah, I also think competitive snowboarding right now, how crazy it is. It kind of separates, separates like competitive snowboarding from backcountry snowboarding more than ever which i think also is kind of great you know because then it it kind of has like it just shows two different sides of snowboarding if you want to do if you got to do four flips on a jump that's so impressive and it's gnarly dude and these guys are doing it and making it look cool hell yeah and you know and these guys are out riding powder and doing crazy crazy lines and doing like it's all sick, you know? Um, yeah. I just, I just like the fact that like, I think backcountry snowboarding is getting a little bit more respect for what it is because of how competitive snowboarding, like what it's turned into. Totally. Um, I, I, yeah, I think that's my answer. Like I, I just, I like where it's going because it's just like, it's, yeah, it's 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 cool and people are killing it. And <laughs> I I like that the 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 old days though. I like um how all of the contest guys, Kevin Jones or Peter Line, yeah. two people, but they would win all the contests and then they would end all the videos. Like yeah, <laughs> and it's almost like being uh the the textbook definition. Uh, the old head in me is like that's the sickest, but now yeah. I'm like that's no longer going to be a thing. When you see the generation that's about to sweep. The rug Dude. from McMorris, Red, like the next generation in five years or four years or even in three. Like, I hope I hope to see Mark and everyone like that win their gold medals at the Olympics. But the the scale on the growth in contest riding and what people are able to do now year over year is it is running rampant. Like it wasn't that long ago where the 1260 was the trick. And now we're at. 21 oh, dude, don't 60s. even start with that stuff dude I, i've just been doing like five five like five five rotations like 21 but, 60 dude, like what's the run insane. gonna be back 18 front 18 and then like i don't i don't even know i don't i don't know anymore i can't comprehend it but like i do like that you touched on how that's gonna separate the two um and like you said some people make tricks like the 16 and the 18 look good and that is when it's the most surprising is for when sure. they, they hold a good line and they land good and they do a good bone and you're like for what that is dude, you I, are doing that perfectly yeah dude I have, I have mad respect for those guys like that that is you you go try and do a front side quad <laughs> you know <laughs> On like an icy park yeah jump and dude flat it's light. so impressive and yeah but it is pretty crazy too though like what those kids have to do now to be able to get in the spotlight uh, compared to like what you had to do back in the days. It's pretty crazy. Like, like I would do contest and like back in the day and maybe get like one hour of sleep and still go ride the event, you know, uh, don't have to get into details, but like that, I was pretty young when that happened. Like I was like 19 and like, you know, just early days. Um, should I say 21? Yeah, totally. Yeah, you can say whatever you want. I mean, 19? We're in Canada, man. Well, you yeah, exactly. 18, 18 in here. Norway. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm just saying, like, you can't, like, go and have a party and then go win X Games right now. Your, co your coach would be disappointed. Oh, yeah, your coach would, your coach you, would be so mad. He'd be spanking you. Totally. <laughs> I mean, like you were saying, like, I like that you touched on how, like, there wasn't, like, people at the gate being, like... Yeah. Nickel, you can't come and say hi to Danny right now. Danny's focused and he's yeah. dropping in. You're like, what? Know, like, just, we're friends. I just want to say good luck, Danny. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. That, yeah, I, I didn't like the part where the, f like, the being friendly at the start of the gate or, like, where everybody can just, like, get along, where it kind of turned into a thing where everybody got separated because we were on a different team or like blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like Annoying. that part I didn't, did not appreciate, but how many contest medals you have X games, elite us opens. I got, um, challenge. uh, 
two bronze uh, in X Games, one slope style and one big air. I won the US Open in 2010. Uh, I've won uh, New Zealand Open. Like, these are all like the Burton contests, like New Zealand Open, uh, Nippon Open, Japan. Ooh, what was that prize purse? Uh, Canada Open, I won uh, one year, actually. At uh, COP, Calgary? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, Aaron Style, second place, first place rookie year. That was actually uh, um, the one that was a big moment in my career, actually, I think. When I did um, um, Aaron Style in Munich, and the the year prior, um, I was sixteen and I was invited to like the rookie challenge, and I won the rookie challenge, meaning I would advance into the to the main, like to the actual contest the next year, and then at the draw, I drew or Travis uh, Rice drew me. And I was 17 and everybody was like, "Woo, you know, and like I was going against Travis and then I was just like, oh, well, shit, I, I really don't have anything to lose now, you know? And then I ended up beating him. What did um, he do? Double back rodeo? Yeah, I think he did double back rodeo. I did switch back 10. You can, I, I'm sure we can find those clips on oh, somewhere. Oh, we'll look for them. But yeah, I did, I did switch back 10 and then I ended up advancing uh and i ended up get, yeah i ended up getting second place it was uh, kevin paris he won he did a cab 12 he was on fire though he years. was on fire yeah kevin paris and then it was myself and then it was torstein who got third yeah like the rise of torstein and kevin pierce like i think yeah, if kevin seriously. pierce didn't have his head injury like i remember like oh, hearing man. about him and then there was like literally one year it was like an 18 month period of him just absolutely like fucking everything up Dude, like he was he was on fire he was so determined no deter, determined you, determined he was so determined and like he, you you could just tell how much he wanted it you know like he really wanted it and obviously he loves snowboarding but yeah he, he had was, the sean white focus yeah exactly yeah yeah he was like true competitor that guy and have also you, wow was such a good snowboarder you ever hang out with sean white yeah i have no way yeah yeah, yeah for sure Dude, actually, the first time I met Sean White actually was in Hempstead on one of those Burton shoots. And I was, uh, we can find probably find those clips, actually. I can try and help you find those clips. Um, You're making homework for yourself. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I met him there for the first time. And for me, when I met Sean White, I w was 11 and I was just like, holy shit, it's Sean White, you know, because I watched all his movies, you know, when he was like riding Burt. He's skating vert. I mean, skating, skating vert, and like just, and he was one of the like, super, like kids uh, that was rode for Burton, and then I was just like, oh shit, like that was the kid that he was the know? top, like he was the Burton kid. Yeah. yeah, he was the poster child, as they would say. I remember he brought um, a PlayStation, and he had that game Tekken Three. Do you know what that is? It's like a no. fight. It's like a karate like fight game, and uh, he, he beat me like every time with like he he's a competitive guy <laughs> <laughs> no he was way better at the video game than i was but uh no i i got nothing bad to say about sean i um i honestly really like him he's he's always been really really nice to me and um he he's done his you know path with snowboarding and that's you know whatever he did you know but uh i have uh, lots of respect for that guy. Also, if we're going to talk about his snowboarding, like first time I watched him like live uh, at X Games when he was just like, he was just going so much bigger than everyone else. Where it was, I was watching it live and I was just like, what the, you know? And so, you know, you can't like, dude, is, dude was ripping yeah I heard, I heard once on um where i don't know where i heard this but uh there was maybe a quote or something like that but it's stuck in my one of my filing ca cabinets of my brains sean kearns being like you can only like 
who's like an iconic filmer. He's just like, you can only make fun of somebody for the style thing until they start going so so much bigger than you. Then you have <laughs> yeah. to shut the fuck up. Dude, dude, seriously. <laughs> though, so but it was It was crazy, like, watching him ride pipe like that. Like, it was just like, like, he was just going so much bigger than everyone else. It was nuts. It's kind of like what's going on right now with the Japanese riders in the pipe. Like, oh, yeah, dude. What, what's his name's doing it? But I... Uh, the guy Kaiju? from no, sorry, the guy who keeps winning, but he's uh Australian. Oh, Scotty uh, James. Scotty James, yeah. Like he's insane at riding pipe. But when I see the Japanese team ride that half pipe after, I'm like, I wish dude, I could so... look like them. Like oh, they look man. so sick. I know, same. They're so stylish, the dude. Japanese riders who they have the best style. One thing that trips me out is the like best style. triple cork in pipe. Ugh, no, stop. It's actually scary because That's like nuts. that I mean it's nuts, but it's also like we don't need like you know what I mean? I don't know. It's <laughs> just like dude, yeah, it, like you can't it, fuck that up. Like yeah. that's live television stuff, you know? Yeah, A know. quad cork in the pipe. Oops. Mm. I've seemed to lost my way. It's like, oh <laughs> no. Like, dude, get the scoop out. Like, yeah, seriously. Dude, A twenty foot Dude. Oh. I, I think aerial skiing like banned five flips or something like that like for the olympics or something where it was like too dangerous to do like that many flips snowboarding's like go for it <laughs> yeah yeah i know i'm like wondering like do you think we'll ever get to the point where we're like they're like okay you can't do seven flips that's just we made fun of aerial skiing but we were never going to get there then we got there then we've Dude. exceeded there and now we're just we're just <laughs> still going. Like, it's, it's dude, do insane. you remember? Do you remember that video game 1080? Oh yeah, yeah. This is my first so, game, dude. Same. Yeah. And uh, it hurt your hand to do a 1080 because you had yeah. to move the thing so quickly. <laughs> but I remember when we finally got to the 1080, and I was just like, I was like, 1080. You know, like, are you kidding me? That's not possible. Like you would look so crazy. Yeah, and then and then obviously the, the people start doing that. And then there was this other game that was called SSX. Oh, Do you remember that? That yeah. game sucked. But Compared dude, that's kind of like two? what that's kind of what like snowboarding is right now though. It's they S were doing like they were doing triple corks. That's and the they reason were why SS Tricky is not in the booth, and that's the reason why Amp Two is because people. Amp, that's the vibe. That's a good one. I know <laughs> Amp Two is. Do like they still steep. make those? No. They should they should bring that back. They don't have like an amp two style video game. They have like the one that Mick Moe's in. Are you in that one too? No, I don't think so. It's it's fine. Oh, I, I'm definitely not in it. I would have known. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think... Have you ever been in a video game? Uh, no, I haven't. <sighs> Come on, some someone put him in. Come a video on, let's game. let's make an amp and. I want to be in it. I yeah, want to be like the, the podcast. You, I'm not in it as a snowboarder. I'm just like this like fucking guy who like comes up like, I'll help you set up your board. <laughs> this is like a fucking. <laughs> oh, that's uh, so good. You can tune your board before you go. Oh, like, man. With, or, you yeah. can do a podcast. I don't know. If we can incorporate that into a, a video game, I'd, I'd be I'd be stoked on, on that. Down. <laughs> uh, you seem very relaxed when you're going into uh, the backcountry. Uh, if you're going into natural selection, uh, I've known you and known of you for a long time. And most people would say that you have a pretty relaxed demeanor. Is that a front? Do you get really stressed and nervous before your like, big film day, big uh, contest event? Or are you just a fairly relaxed person? Or is that um, strategy? Oh, well, yeah, good question. I guess. Um... I like to approach uh, relaxed, you know, because there's not really any, there's no reason to like get like get nervous way before you're gonna go do something, you know. Um, I think you can deal with that when you when you are there, when you when you get to, you know, say that you were going filming, like I'm gonna, you know, relax and stay focused on the things that I got going on. And then once we get out there, then, you know, you can switch into like your film mode or, you know, get, get ready to do, you know, a trick or write a line or, and then obviously it's, then you can feel a little bit of the nerves and that's natural, you know, that'll be there. But, uh, if you can somehow like trick yourself to like, just wait or just wait with that, you know, fair until, if that's what you want to call it. Yeah, no. In, until until you like actually get there and you actually that you don't have to start doing it 
in advance. So if you if you can somehow try and like convince yourself to just chill before that, then I think that's very helpful. I feel like I always stress myself out, um, th- uh, foreshadowing that things will be worse than they are. And if I like, I don't have all the information for something, I tend to lean to like a negative. So like. I don't know. If I was going into a contest, I'd be like, oh, it's probably going to be windy and the jump's going to be way bigger than they need to be and blah, 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 blah. But come up with all this stuff that you don't really know. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will be bigger. Maybe it won't be. Maybe it will be windy. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. And if you don't know something, don't get stressed out over the unknown. Exactly. It's such a waste. It's such a big burden to always be stressed out with stuff when you don't, when you can't have the answer because you don't know. It's a tomorrow thing. So, I've been trying to coach myself basically on like yeah, stop wasting my energy on being stressed out about things that are out of your control. Exactly. Yeah, I'm the same way. And I'm not going to lie. Like I, I have obviously had to go fil- or not had, but like going to film something like say that I know we're going to go ride like a line, you know, and I've had taken, I've taken photos of it. I'm getting prepared and we're like waking up really early to get the first light. Uh, and then of course, it's hard to not think about it, you know, the night prior, like <laughs> before you're going to wake up at like 5 a.m. to go out there and try it. Obviously, you're going to think about it before bed, but that's where you need to like, like you said, like coach yourself to like, just like, just try and like block it a little bit and just like do something else and try. Yeah. You know, uh, or not do something else, but try and just like sleep without like. No, Mickle. That's when you have to go into like old vintage Mickle before he's going to bed and say, I am the best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am Mickle Bang and I am going to be the best. <laughs> I did say that, huh? Oh. Start saying that again. Oh, man. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. It's the same Same with, with like a jump. Like you're building a pre building a big jump and then you know you're going to it and you're like, oh, what trick am I going to do? Am I going to go first? Totally. You know, there's always like thoughts. Yeah. So yeah, like you said, if you can coach yourself to like just chill a little bit, then I, that's, that, that helps me anyway. And then also like the contest, like, uh, I try and approach it like not, I don't know. I don't approach it like a contest. I kind of like, I just, this is, this works for me. I don't know. I don't know if it works for anybody else, but like, I just, try and go there and not really look at it as a contest and just like going out there and just uh, try and do the snowboarding that I enjoy. And like, and that makes, that calms me down, you know, instead of having, or instead of like only focusing on like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to win this or like blah, blah, blah. And then just like shifting the focus into um, just like, I'm going to go out there and snowboard and have a good time. And like, like, Treat it Dude, like another film day. Yeah, exactly. With the yeah, exactly. And like, um, yeah, yeah, exa- exactly. It's like, it could be like a film day. Or if you just like, I just want to like snowboard the way I want to snowboard and do the things that I want to do. And then, and then also like when you're finally there, you know, also like push it a little bit. I mean, you can't just go like full relax. You know, you got to, you can't go full relax, but you can wait. Nobody would be invited to that event, or they shouldn't be invited to that event if they don't have if the switch. You're, yeah, you Mark, gotta, you gotta, you gotta switch at some point, but you can wait until it's like time. I really like that Mark Sollers touched on that um, a couple episodes ago about having like the switch for him. He's like, yeah, if he's riding the park, he's just like a chiller, but then he has like a switch that he can turn on where he's just like, okay, I'm gonna be like a pro now. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I kind of like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like some riders oh, sure. ride with like that, that uh, fierce like pro energy, put everything into each run, always are on. Mm-hmm. And then some people are like, <whistles> and then they're like, oh, we're filming now. Photographers ready, cameras ready. Yeah. Drop biggest air to fakey Kazu Kokobo. I was <laughs> just gonna say that. I was yeah, just totally. gonna say that. Just sitting there, yeah. like, is everybody's kind of looking at him, like, is he gonna snowboard? Is he not? He's not talking to anybody. Like, he's just chilling. <laughs> yeah. And then he hits it, and you're like, no, no, you're you're still really good. Yep. Thanks for coming out, Kazu. <laughs> yeah, that that is, re- yeah, it's the switch for sure. You mentioned um, a while ago there that you wouldn't attend the Olympics. 
Yeah. I was curious to know, was there a reason why? Did you sit down with Terrier over some coffee or? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think Terrier had a lot of good uh, points, you know, with like the Olympics and what they do, you know? Um, I don't go into that stuff as deep as he does, but I think Terry has a lot of good points. Um, I didn't necessarily not want to do it because, well, I mean, he was definitely, um, he definitely influenced me on that part. Like do snowboard events that are for snowboarders by snowboarders, you know, um, and not ran by (laughs) ski, ski, corporate, uh, ski companies. You know? Yeah, totally. Corporations that don't give back yeah. to snowboarding. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I don't know what it was. I just didn't. I, I never had a thing for the Olympics. And I understand why people do. But for me, it was it was not something that I wanted to do. And it might also be because of the stuff I talked about prior. Where it was like, I think I was coming to the point or, where things were starting to change. And I didn't like the change where where things were going, and I don't know. I had been I had been competing for so many years, and I think I was just kind of it it wasn't for me anymore, you know. And one of that one of those reasons too is because my dream was to film in the backcountry. That was like my main goal. Like even when even when I was like doing X Games and like like. Um, us open i was filming on the side i didn't i didn't like uh go to training camp and learn tricks i i went and filmed and that's how that's what i did on the side of the contest so like my dream was to do that and like all the writers that i looked up to they they were filming video parts and also powder was you know that was that's what i wanted to do so but actually pretty funny uh just quickly because when when I stopped competing, um, it was right before the Olympics. Uh, a lot of people wanted me to do the Olympics because I was like I was doing pretty well, and people wanted me to do it. And I actually like and I, I broke my humerus skateboarding, so I was out an entire season. Um, and then that summer. I went to New Zealand and I had agreed like, okay, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do the Olympics. And then I had to get like points to, to like get in. And then, um, uh, right before my event, Luke Mitrani, uh, broke his neck, uh, practicing for pipe. He was going for the Olympics as well. And he broke his neck, which was, that was nuts, you know? Uh, one of my best friends broke his neck, you know, and it, it was, it was, it was a big deal. And then after being with him at the hospital and everything, going back to Wanaka and then like going to the contest, it was a shitty day. I didn't have any friends at the top of the, the contest, uh, you know, at the start gate, it was shitty weather. I did not want to compete at all. It was just, I did not want, I just didn't want to be there really, but I did it because, People wanted me to do the Olympics and I was, I agreed to it and I broke my arm, uh, doing a cab 10 and under rotated and broke my arm, snapped my arm right in, right in half. And when I was laying in the hospital bed and my arm was like sticking out to the side, I was just like, why am I, why am I doing this? Like, I didn't even, like, I didn't want, I didn't want to do this. And then I was like, this, this is, I'm, I'm done with this shit. And then I, not right there and then, but after I did surgery down in New Zealand and everything, and I, I had a talk with Burton and I was just like, Hey guys, like if I want to keep doing this, like I don't want to compete anymore. I just want to film. And they're like, yeah, yeah, no problem. And I was just like, what? (laughs) Is that it? (laughs) Like, is that it? Like. (laughs) Could I have said this like three years ago? Or something? You know, like so, so that, and then yeah, so then from there on, that's that's when I like started hundred percent committing to to filming, and yeah, and I never thought I'd be competing again, but now we're now I'm actually competing again, but it's different, you know. What makes it different? Well, well, first of all, we're in we're in the backcountry, and we don't have like like it's not the like all the guys up there are like my friends, you know. It's kind of back to like where I started with competing, where. 
like everyone at the like all the guys at natural selection is people i respect and we have that mutual mutual you know feeling about each other i i think i hope <laughs> uh but yeah it's it's a different thing and and also it's in the back country you know so um it's a little bit you know more where i want to be from an outsider um judging the event and seeing what it would be like for somebody who's new to the backcountry that gets invited to that event by Travis, whoever, and shows up. The fact that it's a multi-day event makes everybody get intertwined. Everyone gets to know each other. Yeah. And so throughout a week, by the end, you're like, I like that guy. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Or <laughs> like, sure. or like, okay, may, maybe not everybody likes everybody the same amount, but at least you get the opportunity where yeah, a for contest... Sure. You stand up on the top of the run, you see them for two seconds, and then you see them next year. That's all it is. It's yeah. like this is a really healthy way of building it's, like real community with between the top level riders around the world. Absolutely. It's not it's not as much I mean, it's a competition and people get competitive, you know, but uh it's it's not the same as same energy, same vibes. It, yeah, it's thank just you. different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. So I I really like that part. Do you think that there should remain a strong focus um, if brands are going to be elevating uh, professional snowboarders, um, put them on a platform and pay them for them to still film video parts? Do you think that's a dying thing or do you think that that's still an important part of our uh, foundation of snowboarding that we should respect and continue? I actually like... A good example is actually the Beyond Metals guys. I'm going to bring them up again because they just, they've been making movies. Like the last movies that they, and they do the film tour and they do it the old school way. Like they, you know, and people love it. Like I went to some of their premieres and, and it's full. Like people are so hyped and like everyone that we talk to is just like, this is so nice. Like motivation before the season. And, you know, I, I feel like, Obviously, we're in the era of social media, you know, and that's that's just something that we do now. Uh, but I don't feel like you get the same. I mean, that's this is just me, but I don't get the same by scrolling and seeing one good clip. It's kind of like you see it and then it kind of goes in here and then it comes out the other air. You know, it's like um, I, I feel like the, the movies are like, I, I hope I'm right. But I think it's kind of coming back a little bit. I think if you do it a movie properly and you have a proper premiere at a good venue yeah. that has good sound and the the group and all goes on stage, they they say, hey, what's up? We're going to sign autographs after. We're going to give away posters. Everybody introduces themselves. Everybody in the audience is fully, they feel some sort of connection now yeah. with the people that are putting on the film. So when they press play, people are like, I am going to give this film most of them, mm -hmm. my undivided attention and actually pay attention to this art piece that these people put a lot of time and energy into. And mm -hmm. I'm here for the movie. Let's watch it. 45 yeah. minutes long, 30, 15, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I'm fully immersed in the movie where when you're at home, you watch a movie. I watch a movie. And I think everybody agrees with me right now. What I'm about to say, you sit down on the couch with your partner and you look at them while they're watching one of your favorite movies ever, if it's not one of their favorite movies, they on their phone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at a For movie sure. premiere, yeah. it's like most people are going there to really watch the movie, so nobody's on their phone. It's They're immersed in the movie. It's like you just don't mm -hmm. get that at home. Yeah. Even if you're watching sure. the Beyond Metals movie at home, it's like show up to the premiere. It's a different vibe. It's a different energy, and you will give that movie what it deserves. You're full undivided attention yeah. the filmers the writers the editors everybody deserves that like yeah i mean i i don't i don't know I, I can't claim that it's coming back but i i i could i could feel it this year going on the like movie tour and i could feel the like the energy and like the people that came to to see the movie how stoked they were to just like and i agree it's such a nice way to start like in the fall and just watch some snowboarding and like get hyped for the season you know there's something special about that that um regardless where <laughs> this future takes us with technology and like how we show our, cause I mean, we're always going to keep showing snowboarding, you know, that's how we like sell product and motivate people to do the same as us. Right. And like, how are we going to do it? Well, I think 
some of the old school stuff still works. You know, movies are cool, man. I I agree. It is weird though, like when you open up YouTube, for example, and you see a snowboard YouTuber who has 150,000 oh, yeah. followers yeah. more. And then you realize that his audience is turning into like a kooky snowboard video that's getting way too much hype and would have been filtered through by um, the gatekeepers, if you want to call it, yeah. of back in the day. Now it's like there's a lane for all of these niches in snowboarding. And I think if we don't do a good job of protecting snowboarding and we partner more with the Olympics, yeah. we're going to see that slip away faster than we ever have. And it's going to be YouTubers that have um, the modern day reach that trans world used to have. And it's no longer going to be in the hands of companies like, you know, all the companies mm -hmm. we know and love that are really snowboard companies. You can see totally. it with dope and Montech and all these companies that are popping out of nowhere that don't really have anything to do with snowboarding, taking big market share. And it's like, there's nothing wrong with that. All I'm saying is that as somebody that loves the history of snowboarding and like our roots and where we came from and the whole journey that we've had mm -hmm. to like see that getting pushed out by a completely new narrative is just, it's just sad. You're like, oh, so, you know, thanks Gigi for your 40 years of video yeah. parts, but those are no longer important because this guy on YouTube just goes, jibba jabba jabba or oh, whatever. Like yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. It's just, it's just, it would be sad. Yeah, if, it really would be sad. You're like, oh, the switch backside nine I, nose grab on a park yeah. jump doesn't matter anymore. Go ride down the hill and dress up like a, th th that's the thing is they dress up in weird costumes and stuff. And if I carry my cat and I dress like Superman, I can get a million views. It's just like, who cares? Totally. <laughs> But if, at the same time, though, I, I totally agree with you. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I feel like the major, majority of people watching that, well, maybe that's the problem, too, because they're, they're not really like people who are super passionate, passionate for, about yeah. snowboarding. But maybe, I don't know, man. It's just... It's tricky. It's it's a tricky one. It's tricky because you want people to experience snowboarding and have as much fun maybe, with that tool as possible. Maybe that's the first step for them to get interested in snowboarding. It would be weird if they want to go snowboarding because this person is holding a cat and got a weird hat. And <laughs> it's like, but I don't know. I I I think in the end, whatever happens with our future and like what we do to promote snowboarding, I I do think that like. We're always gonna like to see a snowboard movie. I hope. I hope that that. Uh, I because, hope so. <laughs> yeah, because you look look at a fourteen year old kid right now, a thirteen year old kid who's just getting in. Yeah. If we wanted to consume snowboarding back in the day, you'd have to get a magazine, a video. You'd yeah. have to have a mentor, someone like Lars, someone, someone. Yeah. It, that's the only way you could consume it. Mm -hmm. But now with. Maybe the, the, we should all just become YouTubers. And I mean, I <laughs> I saw Sollers pushing into that, and I was yeah. like, honestly, I couldn't be happier that somebody who is a respected professional snowboarder who's had, you know, has been to the front lines it's a million nice times. That someone like that exactly. can do it. Yeah, you're for like, sure. we need more people like yeah, that. Yeah, it'd be nice because YouTube is not for everyone. It's not for me, uh, just personally. But it's nice that like uh, somebody in our community that like no snowboarding can can do those so like it's not just those people that carries the cat and totally you know yeah it's it's a tough conversation because it's one of those things where you don't want to make uh, snowboarding seem like too like oh there's gatekeepers and it's like it's just a certain club it's like we want everyone to join the club but i want people to join the club that i'm a part of because i think it's really special and it's good for the world and it's like there there's so many amazing in individuals who have like shaped this cool artistic art form that i love yeah. and to just remove that and erase that like it wasn't important is just like everything i've known and loved just gets deleted because mm -hmm. there's people that are better at getting the the algorithm Dude. dialed and yeah. stuff it's just like ah yeah that is that is really frustrating so thank you to all of you for <laughs> watching this yeah uh, seriously uh, yeah i mean if they're watching a mickle bang airtime episode we're doing we're doing something right here yeah um all right uh, natural selection is coming up. Let's just say that you're in the drop in gate. Is there anybody you don't want to be uh, going against? Is there anybody like, no, not them? Or are you like, whatever? Dude, honestly, uh, at this point, I don't want to go against any of them. You know, it's like, it's like everyone is so good. And, and with the whole knockout system too, you never, 
any, like anything can kind of happen. Uh, but then I kind of go back to what I said earlier, where it's like it's like, like what I will do is just not care so much what they do and just focus on my own path and and that's gonna like keep me not worrying about who I'm going against. Okay, let's just say you get first. Yeah. Is there anybody else that you would love to see on the podium beside you? Oh, on the podium? Yeah, you get double, you get uh, you get first. Ben. <laughs> For sure, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Is he like your little brother? Dude, we uh <laughs> I guess he just turned twenty nine. Uh yeah, he's he I wouldn't say he's like my little brother. I would he's my brother, you know? I we uh we've been traveling so much uh now together and yeah dude he is he's such a good guy and what a snowboarder dude and mo and motivated it's actually been really nice to ride with him too because like um I'm not going to I'm not saying I'm not unmotivated but when you're 29 you're more motivated than when you're 34 totally I think at least that's what I feel like right now. But being with someone or like shredding with someone who's younger than you, like him, and like who has that, like still that, like we got to get the shots, you know, it's um, definitely helps. I look at like the Devin Ika combo though. You know what I mean? Like Ika starts riding with Devin. I'm imagining Ika was like fired up, lots of energy. Yeah. Devin, maybe not the, the same amount of energy, but Devin's like can help him navigate the waters of being in the backcountry and what shots might work up, whatever, doubling the sled, whatever needs to get done. It's super important to have that like older, younger, uh, yin and yang mentorship, and I think that Ben is a good yin to your yang. Out For there. sure, and honestly, like uh, when it comes to age, like I don't even like think about that when we're together. You know, like age is just number at that point. You know, we're we're out there and we want to ride the same stuff, and we're good buds, and yeah, yeah. It's, well, good it's luck good. to Ben. Who do you think yeah, is going to take it take it home for the for the ladies, or who do you like to, anybody you would want to see? Ooh. I don't know. I mean, Zoe has been doing so good lately. I don't know. Oh, she's was she was injured lately, wasn't she? I hope not. I know she was, but I was hoping yeah. she would be good enough for this. Uh, oh man, it's so tough. It would be sick to see Hannah get back up there. I really, she's awesome. I want to see you go against Ben. <laughs> I really hope I don't have to go against Ben again. It's always such a bummer. Oh, like, totally. yeah, it's like go against the one person you're like, I want to go yeah, to the like, end with you. And it's it's funny too. Like uh, at Natural, so like they've always like Ben and I have always been roommates, you know. And then whenever we have to go against each other and we're in the same room, we're like, all right, all right, bud. Good luck tomorrow. Good night. <laughs> you know, it's like it sucks going against your friend. Oh. One one good thing, uh, I mean, when you're going against, like, if I were to go against Ben, then at the same time, it's kind of cool because one of us is going to advance. That's kind of a win in a way. Yeah, that's that's kind of a win in a way, you know, if, like, one of us makes it. That's the only upside. That's the only, like, positive thing I can think of. Okay. You guys should uh, split the Rivian. That's 120 grand. I know. Isn't that crazy? That's a Ball and purse. That is a really nice car. That's, that's nice. like the most, that's the biggest prize purse I've seen in an event in a long yeah, time. Seriously. That's going back to like the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah. Like the fact that they're going to post you guys up at an event, take care of everything, and then your prize purse is like boss is yeah. like, damn, that's a big event. <laughs> For sure. It's really cool. Yeah, those cars look pretty sick. Somebody said 120 or 130 grand for that I heard truck. the same thing. That's, that's awesome. I hope you win that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I also hope I, hope I have so, so many friends going there. It's like asking me who's going to like who I want to win. I'm like, yeah. man, it's, I, I mean, a Canadian sweep is what I'm hoping for. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, dude. I actually, I hope, uh, I think, um, Mikey Cicerelli might be a good one this year. I've been watching him lately and he's been like, he's been riding a lot, you know? I think he's got strong legs and he's got the mentality to like go out there and like do great, great things. So he's got the eye of the tiger. He's got the eye of the tiger and I'm excited to see what he does this year. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of riders I think that are, yeah, there's, it's going to be a good Mick Mo is back. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's uh yeah, it's going to be a good one. I think it'll be a good show. Uh, bang slalom. Yeah. 
You put that event on. What is it for people that don't know? It's on your cup over there. I can yeah, see. Yeah, just promoting over here. Yeah, shine um, that into the, this camera three over here so people can get a glimpse. That's like one of our old stickers, actually. Oh, that looks um, like another tattoo styled sticker. Yeah, actually, Blue Arms, the shop, uh, my friends, and also they, um, uh, my friends Nicholas, he is always he's always drawn drawn our uh, um, posters and stickers and yeah. Wicked. They help out with that. Yeah, so Bang Slalom is a Bang Slalom event in Norway. Uh, this year will be our seventh annual. Damn, already. Yeah, I know. That's crazy because yeah. to me it seems like yesterday you started that thing. I know, I know. And I've been telling you for it, seven years I'm going to come. <laughs> it's been such a, like, like having an event has been such a, like, big, like, learning experience. Uh, and to see how far we've come from what, the first year we made it is it's it's pretty cool like now we got now it's almost like a festival you know and uh second year in a row where we're like we like the tickets are gone in like two hours and we have two 200 200 spots uh so it's really starting to people people are really stoked uh last year we had 46 terms is it do you have to pay for the 200 how much is it to uh, right in? now burton is a part of it the burton burton mystery series so it's like a we started our brand bang solemn uh and then burton has been involved and it's like mystery series right now and so it's free entry burton pays for or it's free nice so that's pretty nice do you have um, a rough idea of how much it costs to put on this event uh not as much as you would think uh, we're definitely getting a lot of, uh, I don't want to like go into numbers, but, um, the resort is paying cat hours Wow, and then that's big, that's big. And they, you know, they, they help out with everything up there. It's called Sulheisen. Shout outs. Shout outs to Sulheisen. That means the sun lift. No, oh, the sun lift is the sun just... lift. Yeah. On the sunny side of the valley. Uh, they're great. Everyone there is great. And they, um, yeah, they've been helpful. Very, very helpful. Uh, and then Burton chips in, and then we have Nixon and Dragon. Uh, that's like the main main sponsors. Wicked. Oh, and, Re and Rebel. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> that's good to know. Re Rebel is involved too, which is really nice. They've been uh, helping us with some money. Wicked. Yeah, and uh, but it's not. We're not currently. We're not. We're not making any money on this, you know. But that's not. That's not why we're doing it. Uh, we're doing it to give something back to the snowboard community, you know. And uh, just have like a big party at the end of the end of the year with, um, yeah. So there's a good there, company. There's a slalom course. There's yeah. also like there's a hip. Yeah, that's so that's a, a part of the mystery series. So the race uh, at its own is the bang slalom. And then mystery series has like an event uh, that they do uh, on the side. Cool. With the race. And that's kind of just like a, a jam session and product giveaways and just you know to get everyone stoked and yeah all right well i would love to go so uh pat dodge or zach nigro or whoever get me over there oh yeah <laughs> dude some, seriously we need to get you somebody over. fly me over there <laughs> dude that would be sweet <laughs> we could do like an airtime uh, we can um, somehow some, find a loophole yeah do <laughs> so, like an interview thing yeah, over there yeah and then you do do the race we have a party yeah, that's that's <laughs> not why. I mean, I would be going for the party. <laughs> yeah, the race. I mean, party, Norway, snowboarding, <laughs> uh, speed race. Do do you go in the race yourself? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, Undefeated, seven years in a row. First, I have I won it once. Oh, who's the winners? Uh, Matthew. This is the pro men that I'm gonna mention right now. It's uh, Matthew Capel. Oh yeah. Um, Nicholas Miller. Uh, myself. Teria, um, and then it was Pontus, and then it was Brage, this Norwegian. Yeah, kid. yeah, I know who you're talking about. So, yeah, so uh, yeah, that's it's a pretty good list. That is a good list. Who do you who you think's and gonna take ben, home? And Ben, Ben has had two second places. Oh, uh, Jared got second place last last year. Um, it's always fun, but you know, it's kind of it's kind of weird to like win your own contest. But I kind of have to like be in it. But I've also been very true. I know I like build the course. That's like my task as to like build this course. And um, 
it might seem a little unfair that I get to like. Is this the in Travis it. Rice talk? But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I don't ride the whole thing through, you know, before we ride the event. Um, I just I have to like I I build like two berms and then I like do the two berms, see if it works, and then I continue. Mick, two we'll berms. just ride the event. If you have to, <laughs> if you get a couple runs in before everybody else, it's not cheating. You're putting on the event. Without you, there is no event. So <laughs> that's how yeah. I looked at the with Travis when people are like. Oh, it's like he gets to pick the venue and stuff. I'm like, there wouldn't be, be natural- a venue. The reason didn't... why Travis is picking the venue is because out of all of you, he, he knows, is the best at picking he, out a venue. He, he knows <laughs> he knows where to go for a hundred percent. But um, um yeah. what I was going to say one last thing. So the bank, how the bank slalom started and why it's called the bank slalom is because I had done a few bank banked slalom events before, and I went to the baker. Baker mm-hmm. banked yep. uh, when I was 21 for the first time. Made it in the finals. Didn't get didn't get top uh, six, but I kind of fell in love with like the bank bank slalom events and just like the whole you know how like people are together and like it's it's just for snowboarding you know yeah. it's like and it's nothing crazy it's just like hang out and racing and it's sick you know <laughs> totally and then i did a few um i did some races with terrier and then at one point terrier was like he hit me up and he was like hey uh would you be down to do a race or like like make a bank slalom event in in norway and i was like heck yeah Dude, are you kidding me? Like, Terry, like the best bank slalom. Like, he's been Edge ruling. control. Dude, yeah. Uh, so that was like a, that was, I thought that was really cool when he asked me if I wanted to join that. And then a year after, after a lot of back and forth, he, when everything was like, the ball was, has started rolling. Uh, he was like, I have a lot of stuff on my plate right now. Uh, so I think you should make this your event. And I think you should call it Bank Slalom. And that's how that's how it started. And then from there on, I just took over and he would come. He hasn't come for the past two years, but I'm sure he'll be back. But uh, yeah, so he's kind of the reason why this happened. So he kind of like handed it to me on the silver plate and was just like, here, you know. So I'm very, very grateful and um, yeah, very grateful that he helped me out with that. I love that you're doing that a little community give back. Yeah, you know? for sure. It's like when you're in the position, why not? Dude, and it's so fun. And it's also the closing weekend of uh the resort. Uh the and always the last weekend of April, you know, before May. So it's like it's like a nice season ender. Is it know? already sold out? Yeah. Okay, so you can't sign up for it, but you can check it out. But I have a few spare tickets if you want to come. Oh, I, I definitely want to come. Okay. So, so I was just wondering <laughs> if there's a way for our listeners to get in. Yeah, but... if the listeners, want, if anybody wants to um, join for next year, then uh, just follow, check check it out on Instagram. I don't <laughs> Does know. it have Give its me own follow. Instagram? <laughs> oh, we do. It's actually run by my friend, too. It's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you check on my Instagram, Michael bang, then, um, I'll, I'll give you a heads up and then, you know, it's, uh, we usually, um, uh, start registration in early February. Okay. So if, yeah, I'm going to try and like be really yeah on it on Instagram to let everybody know when the dates are and then just save it in your calendar and then be ready when we put it online. Mark that shit down, people. <laughs> All right, what's next for Mickle? Um, like, take it where you want it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if we're, I'm gonna continue with the winter because I'm still not over. I'm still in the kind of winter mode uh, after after um, natural selection. I really want to um, go to Alaska. Would like to go up there and try and ride some lines and then after that uh yeah for the for the new project that we're doing and then after that and hopefully actually come back here to whistler because uh man if it's good here this is like this is literally my favorite place in the world is no more so uh but anyway yeah after after alaska um 
go home, build a bank slalom course, and then enjoy some uh, some time off. Well, enjoy that. I like that. I think that's a great plan. I think that you going to Alaska and riding and then coming back here when the season turns on sounds like a great plan. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would. I highly recommend. Who are you riding for these days? Uh, my main sponsors is Burton, Dragon, and Nixon. Those are like, that's my, my backbone right now. And then I have like a few other people that support me, you know, like Blue Arms, Tattoo, uh, Bluebird Wax, Airtime Podcast, Slash Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I see a Powderhound sticker. What's oh, yeah. That? And my, that's a, that's our boys. That's Canadian boys right there. Powderhounds. Who's in the Powderhounds? Uh, Mikey Renz, Dustin Craven, and Mark Sellers. Bunch of lead. And a bunch of other people too, but uh, but I'm just going to say those people for now. Bunch of legends. You got any thank yous before I ask you 10 questions? Oh, you're going to go on a quick 10? Dude, just the bullet point 10. Uh, well, definitely um, thank you, Jake. Thank you, Lars. Thank you, my family, my wife, and snowboarding. Thank you. Have you met Jake a couple times? Yeah. You got one Jake Burton story for us before we close? Oh, man. A standout Jake Burton moment. I just feel like, you know, you're on Burton. You've been on them for 400,000 years. We might as well honor I'll, the guy that gave you this entire I'll, life. I'll never forget um, the first, because Jake used to have these, like, rider roundtables where, because he was very, he really wanted his riders to be involved with the brand and, you know, to, like, help shape it and um, steer it towards the right direction. And, um, Shout outs to that. Shout outs to that. Um, the first time they used to have these rider round ta- uh, rider round tables, and the first time I went to it uh, after arrival, he was like, uh, "Hey, we're gonna go on a little trip," and uh, uh, I got in a a black car, ended up at a an airport in a private airplane, flew to Boston from New York, uh, saw the Celtics play courtyard. Flew back on a private airplane and back to the house and partied. Like that was the that was the, like I remember when that happened. I was just like, wow, because like Jake, Jake really really liked to, he really treated us well, and he wanted to like whenever he had a chance he would like spoil us, and uh, he wasn't only like that to us. He was like that to everyone. He was like the kindest, most like yeah. He was a really humble, nice, kind guy. Like yeah. Good dude. But yeah, I, I, and I think that also showed like how much he cared about us. So like, not just this, there's m- m- so many examples of it, but he, he really treated his uh, team with, you know, love. So, I mean, if you're in the position to spoil people or like help them out or give them an experience that they would uh, never have without you and you have means to do so, it's like, yeah. that's one of the greatest gifts ever. To yeah, be, so like, nice. who wants to, live in a nice home by themselves. It's like they want people to, you want people to come in and you want to like feed them a nice dinner and you want them to swim in your pool. And you, if you have a private jet, you want them to use the jet. Yeah, exactly. Celtic tickets. You want to hook up the homies. Dude, that shit blew my mind. I was like, (laughs) what? We're on a private jet. And now we're like courtyard. I'm like, what is going on here? Did you you have a drink in the private jet? Oh yeah. Nice. That's yeah. dope. We had whiskey. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Full like Who like was in, the jet in a, with you? like in a crystal glass. Like uh it was me, Jake, and Greg Dunkishin, I think was in it. Uh but we were a small crew because we, we weren't like so he used to do that to um uh, like so any team rider that came for the first time to the round uh, rider round table, he would do that. He would take him on a private jet to watch the Celtics. As like a welcome, you know, so, so badass. Yeah, so it was pretty funny too. Whenever like whenever new people would come to, to the meeting, you were like, oh, you are you're gonna have a good time right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're like, you don't even know what kind of treat you're in for. Yeah, exactly. All right, some quick bullet points here. Uh, who has the best method in snowboarding? Oh, that's like, uh, well, I'm gonna say Nicholas. Best style currently and best style back in the day. Oh man, you know I'm actually I've actually been a really big fan of um, Blake Paul lately. Uh, I think he's got yeah for sure. And then back in the day, I let's just go with OG JP man, JP Solberg because he was he influenced my yeah yeah really sick. Most underrated rider, Charles Reed. Oh, good pick. Uh, favorite rail rider. Ooh, 
Louis Paradis. Oh, nice. What keeps you up at night? Huh? What keeps you up at night? Oh, man. Uh, bears. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cheers to that. <laughs> Ride or die, baby. Uh, <laughs> who has the best turn? Mm, Teria. Favorite tattoo? Ooh, actually, um, <laughs> I could say a funny one, but uh, there is this. I got, I got this um, uh, in Japan. A traditional. It's called tabori. It's like they tattoo you with a uh, long stick. And it has like needles on the end and it takes forever, but it's a really pretty tattoo. I'll show it to you right here. Yeah, get that up. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. Let's, Let's look see if at you this. can keep your leg up high so that the people that are watching on YouTube can see it. <laughs> there. Oh, damn. Can you see it? The homie is kitted. How many tattoos do you have? Uh, I got my entire body. It's everywhere. Yeah. The only. Where's only... left? Anything uh, vacant? Yeah. I have my. Uh, my right, the back of my right thigh is the last. Are your ass cheeks done? Actually, I don't have my <laughs> that ass. Is I don't. Bare. I don't have my. Yeah, my ass is bare. Ass is bare. And what about the so zone? I'm gonna what have, about, I'm what gonna about have your to, junk? I'm gonna have to. No, the junk is is tattoo so free. Tat it up. <laughs> it's no <just> a snake. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No, I um. I guess eventually I got to do something on the butt, huh? Otherwise, it's going to look really weird. No way, dude. That's funny. <laughs> Make it funny. Make no it funny. butt. It's uh, a nice bare butt. Yeah, no, I've been, I've, dude, I've been getting tattooed for so long. And, um, like, in the beginning of, like, getting tattooed, I didn't really know who to go to and stuff. And then, like, lately, you know, like, my, my good friends at Blue Arms, like, they've been just, like, you know, getting me really good tat tattoo tattoos, so. I gotta say, I love shout the tattoo out, look. Shout out to Blue Arms, Nasla. When did you get your first one, and was that like, holy shit, I'm dropping in here, or have you always been like, oh, whatever, let's get one? No, definitely. First time, it was definitely like, holy shit, kind of moment. Um, it was, it was this one right here. Uh, bang! Um, I was 17. I was in Colorado. I lied about my age and got one. They didn't check ID. I said I forgot my ID, but uh, yeah. But anyway, I got that one and. Actually, I was at a wedding this summer, Luke Matrani's wedding, and an old friend came to me and he was like, he hasn't, hasn't, he hasn't seen me in a really long time. And he was like, dude, I remember the first time when you got your first tattoo and you were explaining to me why you got it on your left hand. And that was because when you met people, then you would shake them with the right hand and they wouldn't see that you had a tattoo on your, on your wrist. And now look at you. <laughs> you have the palm of your hand tattooed with an oh, alien. Yeah. That one's so <laughs> sick. That one's dope as fuck. Yeah, that was good. What's your least favorite tattoo? Ooh. Uh, I got a flamingo down <laughs> well, here. Well, the flamingo, you don't like it. <laughs> I don't know. It's a little It's a little bad. I would probably. It, yeah, it was kind of random. But anyway, it's kind of fun. I kind of like the flamingo. <laughs> okay, thanks. I like thanks, it. Thanks, dude. It's like. <laughs> You need something that's kind of random. You can't. I feel like tattoo people where everything flows with everything. That's not my look. I like looks, a little bit of like. Perfect. I like like perfection mixed with imperfection. Sometimes. Same with my snowboarding. That's my taste. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Like I like Dude, controlled chaos. Um, I feel like sometimes your bad tattoos are almost the better tattoos as well. Sometimes. But then uh, when you when you get to the point where I am right now, where it's like it's there's so much like it all blends in it's so much that you don't even like notice the shitty ones pretty much. You were giving Dustin a tattoo. What t tattoo did you give Dustin? Punt. Punt? Yeah, it was the thing we said in Alaska. Was yeah, that yeah. We'd go hunt, punt, or punt. hunt and punt. <laughs> hunt and punt. I got one too right here. Did Dustin do that one for D you? Dustin did that one. Uh, favorite place to snowboard? Ooh. Say, uh. BC. Nice. You got a specific spot? It's secret. Yeah, I know which one you're trying to say there. Whistle Creek or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Shandy land. <laughs> I said it once here on the podcast that on the Sheen campus episode, and Sheen's just like, what? What did you say there? Zipper Mouth Creek? Like <laughs> <laughs> Zipper Mouth Creek. No, but honestly, though, I, I think like uh, just even just here, like Whistler Backcountry and the fact that um, you can access the backcountry here so easy with a sled is 
It's so nice. It's so easy, and it's right there. Like, I kind of like being quiet about good zones. I think yeah. that now that I'm older and I realize that the it's the boom of everybody sharing everything on social media. It's like no, you, you don't you want to. Go- well, if you if you if you want to keep stuff to yourself, then I mean, and and if you really like snowboarding that much, you probably will find it. Yeah, it's true. Um. All right. You gotta go Travis Rice style and like get on Google Earth and shit. Who's the greatest of all time? Who's the goat? Say Travis. <laughs> <laughs> I I I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna give it to Travis actually, because like he's been going on for so long and like look at him right now. He's still going, dude. It's incredible and. Like, I mean, Terry, obviously, like, it's definitely up there. But, like, right now, like, Travis Rice is just like, yeah, I respect him. I respect him big time. Yeah. that's That wasn't too bad, huh? <laughs> too bad for what? <laughs> just, I think that was a good pick. <laughs> was that a good pick? I don't know. You, like, I like it. I like that pick. I think it's a great pick. <laughs> Who's snowboarding don't you like? <laughs> Who's the worst team manager you've ever had? Oh my god! Who's the wackest style in the entire world? <laughs> Whose front threes irritate you? <laughs> There's the real pot. Everybody who's See, listening right now is like, please. That's what you guys actually want to hear, huh? <laughs> totally. Oh, maybe another time. Yeah, totally. Has anybody ever just completely let you down? Have you ever met a pro that you were really hyped to meet, and then they were like, you know, a little anticlimactic? I for sure have, like, when I was younger, definitely have, like, met pro riders and they're just, like, kind of dicks, you know? Mm, Totally. And uh, I did not want to become one of them. You're not at all. I think that's just stupid. Yeah, it's a bad look. Yeah, why why be mean to people? Yeah, totally. Stupid. Have you ever hung out with Nate Bozung before? Yeah. No. Yeah. Wicked. Have you ever got a tattoo with Nate Bozung? No. Oh, that would have been cool. That would have been cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. If he ever listens to it, probably we should probably get one. Fuck yeah. When's the last time you saw him? Uh, in New York. I don't remember what year. It's not. Jake was still alive, uh, but he came to one of the like Burton parties in the city. Sick. We're hanging out some rooftop party. Nice. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Who's your favorite rail rider? That's uh, I mean, you said Lewif, but you got a couple of. We didn't talk about steel at all. Mm-hmm. There's people that ride well, I think, rails that I think are just Je- they feel I, well, excluded. I th- I feel like well, Jed Anderson for sure, definitely really sick. But like Jeff Anderson, dude, like you watch his clip, like the clips he has, like you watch it today, and you're like, damn, dude, like the guy didn't even have a freaking jump. <laughs> you know. He he just jump. He doesn't have a jump. There's like there's like half an inch of snow on the takeoff, and he just pops up on it. You know, like that's pretty cool. Yeah, pop. Yeah. It, who is the best pop in snowboarding? Dude, actually, Nicholas had some crazy pop. I don't know if that's if he's light and he makes like twangy jumps, but he like I guess maybe Arthur Longo has like some, but he kind of makes like twangy jumps. Yeah, he makes it? poppy jumps, like but he's also jumps got pop. Like, yeah, he's, got, he's oh, got, actually, uh, P two, Piranin. Oh yeah, he was a savage, dude. When he used to hit, when we would hit park jumps with him, he popped. He really popped. That's a nice skill. I like that. You know, Burton made a sticker once that it was said, uh, uh, "I need to P two, Piranin." <laughs> I, I don't. I didn't know that. Oh, that's kind of funny, isn't it? What's your favorite uh, Burton graphic of all time? Oh, I really like the. Oof, that's tough. I I really really like the Burton Seven with the the snake. That one, I really like that one. I feel like I like the one with the the playmates on it. Those ones were cool when I was a oh, kid. Oh yeah. I like pretended I didn't like them. Yeah. But then I was like, damn, that girl's so hot. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yo, we actually got in a lot of trouble for making those. I remember. Yeah. Well, it was such a good market. It was so good. Such good marketing. It was like those boards were sold out like right away. I heard Donna talking about it on the bomb hole. Yeah. On her episode. But uh, 
All right, man. I don't know. Thanks for coming on the show. Huge fan. Can't wait to see you in Revelstoke. Uh, thanks for all the years of inspiration. Um, yeah, man. Continue to keep doing your thing. You're pushing in to new little mini avenues like you have been as of late, and it's uh, it's working. It's working for you. So uh, cheers. Cheers, man. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, man. Huge f- I fucking love what you're doing, man. <laughs> I love just, what you do too, man. It's just great. And, and we need to go ride more together because today was really fun. It, well, I, had, I, I just, if I'm being honest, kind of had like a naggy little headache today. Oh, really? Like a little headache. Well, I couldn't, and not, I, I couldn't and tell. And then my, there was like a million different things that it just like was into. I was like, it was a struggle for me to get into it. Did you drink last night? No, no. I didn't. But like, but at the end of the day, yeah, that's when I started having the most fun. Like the first run was fun because it's a powder. Powder, yeah. And then that depleted. But that was powder panic. It was full powder panic. <laughs> and I think I'm just like really stressed out about all the life stuff. But then through this podcast, we talked about like you can't be stressed about things when you don't know. Like I'm a, uh, I'm manifesting and envisioning a future without knowing, um, what's gonna happen. So I'm just like I'm putting it out there that I'm gonna be like I'm like oh all these things. I have some tax tax shit that I'm dealing with right now, and I don't know if it's going to be a huge bill or not so big. And I'm like, damn, I also got like a wedding. You know, there's a lot of bills. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to there's think There's so about. many fucking bills all the time, dude. It's not like I'm drowning in I debt know. or anything, but with losing, I also lost like 25, maybe 35, I don't know, a big amount of crypto. And I was I was bummed. I was upset. Goddamn crypto. I think that was it. Cause yesterday I was trying to get it back and I couldn't. The goddamn crypto shit. And and then I was and then I, I see it. you in the morning and I'm still fucking bummed about the crypto shit. I couldn't get out of the crypto. <laughs> yeah. I was in a crypto. But you hole. forgot about it once you started going down the hill though. The first yes, I did. The first two <laughs> yeah. runs, it was similar to what we were saying about the three, two, one. It was yeah. like it was dropped blank. in and it was blank. No more crypto. But that that right there is the best thing about snowboarding. Type of like meditation kind of thing where you just get into your like own flow state and you're just going and you're so in the present. Totally. You're like, oh, I have a bunch of annoying shit going on in my life. You're like, so does everybody else. Welcome to the club. Yeah. Go strap in. Go, go do a couple laps. I did. Dude. I feel great. Uh, Mikey and I, we went to uh, do some runs the other day uh, up at Metal Dome. Brandy wine. And... Um, we got down to the bottom. Mikey was just like dead because that was, it was so much fun. And Mikey was just like, dude, there's nothing in the world that really makes me this. This is, this is fun, dude. You know, like it, it's kind of crazy. Like when you write, you know, powder is fun, but like when you, when you're in it and you get back on snow and you're doing your turns, you're like, you forget how fun it actually is. Like, dude, it's, it is, it's tough too, because the powder panic is so real because everybody, when it snows a bunch, everybody wants to get that dopamine hit that they remember, like that one turn, that one back three, that indie, that like sick pillow drop. Everybody wants to get that back. Yeah. And that's the reason why all day to day I was complaining. I was like, I just need to get in the air because <laughs> yeah, a, a, a powder day without getting air or a good turn is a flop. <laughs> and I ended up getting all those things. And then I, I get that that dopamine hit that I'm looking for. Yeah, we sure got that. <laughs> but the thing is, you never know unless you go. Like, me and Pettit went up yesterday at the end of the day. We didn't get anything. We were riding in schmooey snow. The chairlift was closed halfway because it was a fucking blizzard. 150-kilometer-hour <laughs> yeah. winds, like, that you're oh, getting up halfway. No. Me and Sean do one run, and he looks he's similar to Nicholas where he's all light and agile, so everything yeah, yeah. he's doing is looking cool. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I'm just rolling down the hill like a bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was riding fine, but like yeah. Sean is like nimble, you know. Yeah, for sure. He's like a nimble little little ninja. Well, either way, that was fun. Yeah, it was, that was honestly this is the best day of my life. <laughs> Thanks for uh subscribing, hitting the bell, uh being a Patreon member and uh make sure that you follow Mickle Bang and if you want to go to his event, the Bang Slalom, make sure you sign up next February and be set that reminder now or you're going to you're going to miss the date. And thanks to Mikkel for being one of the greatest snowboarders with one of the most tasteful approaches on the mountain right now. Great. <laughs> just r- r- the best turny, flowy moves down the mountain. Not a lot of people get that turn. They white room themselves. It seems like kind of a hack job, you can almost say. There's, there's some uh, 
you've unlocked some sick levels right now. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yeah. But you still have room for improvement, so keep dude, snowboarding. there's always room for improvement. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you so much, man. Peace. Thanks for listening, everybody. Sign up, subscribe. Should we go to Garf's night? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two. Oh, my God. Uh, what's up? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the program. The Airtime Podcast is presented by Van Shoes since 1966. There's nothing fake about it. Have something to believe in and be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Airtime, y'all podcast. Yes, sir. <laughs>